Soon after, Wednesday came. It was finally the fifth day. Two more days and Alex would be back. Abby was missing Alex so bad and it was getting worse by the day. She hadn't had any contact from him at all, not a single text or a call. Abby might have started to wonder if she had just made him up in her head if it wasn't for the utter sadness in her heart, telling her that he was not just a figment of her imagination because her feelings were very real. Thankfully, on that day, Kelly suddenly barged into the orphanage, waving an envelope in the air as she ran towards Abby, as if to save her from another painful day. Abby. Good news. I got an invitation from Country V's royal family. They're going to have a ball. They invited Dad and I, but Dad suddenly had a very important matter he had to deal with right now, so he regretfully gave the invitation to me. And so, here I am, inviting you. Kelly excitedly told her. The girl knew that Abby had been dreaming to see Country V. Hearing her, Abby was overjoyed. She saw the photos Kelly had taken when she had traveled before to Country V, the so-called hidden kingdom in the South, and she had been so envious. Since then, Country V had become her dream place and she had been wishing to see it for herself one day before her time was up. She didn't include this on her wish list with Alex because she thought that a request like that was a little too over the top. This news served two purposes for Abby. She would finally get to see the beautiful country she had been dreaming to see and it would serve as a very good distraction to keep her mind from missing Alexander Cheen. We're going to stay there for just two days. Are you in? Of course. Thank you for inviting me, Kelly. He he he. Well, I am excited to show you the delicious candy men in that kingdom. Not that anyone out there could beat your Mr. Cheen's beauty, though. Never mind. Come, let's go get your things. Our flight is early so you have to sleep at my house tonight. Finally, the day of their trip arrived. Abby was extremely excited as she read up on some facts about the country. Country V's government was an absolute monarchy. It was famously known as the Hidden Kingdom of the South because of its secluded location. This kingdom had also never been colonized throughout its whole history because of the same reason, its strategic location made it impossible to be invaded. The country's landscape ranged from lush subtropical plains in the south to subalpine mountains in the north. The land consisted mostly of steep and high mountains crisscrossed by a network of swift rivers that formed deep valleys. The northern region of the kingdom consisted of an arc of alpine shrubbery and meadows reaching up the glaciated mountain peaks with extremely cold temperatures, while the southern region had a more moderate climate and was covered by heavy savanna grass, dense, mixed jungles with freshwater springs and mountain rivers, fed by melting snow. Seventy percent of terrain was coated by a majestic forest, while nine percent was pressed beneath glaciers. Once Abby and Kelly got off the plane, Abby breathed in the fresh air and she immediately felt something was different about this place. It was like there was magic in the air. She couldn't explain it but she just felt like this was no ordinary place. The scenery was just picture-perfect but at the same, she felt like it was a kingdom shrouded in mystery. Abby may not have traveled to many places, but she felt like this place was one of a kind, like she would not find a place like this anywhere else in the world. The kingdom was a complex blend of the ancient and modern worlds which made it endlessly fascinating. As they traveled to their hotel, Kelly told Abby about some other facts that she knew about the kingdom. She said that the kingdom was first ruled by a member of the Rain family. The Rain royal family was the official, undisputed and absolute ruler of the kingdom since the beginning of the country's history. Kelly's father was a good friend of the kingdom's current king so he had told Kelly a lot about the country. According to her father, the Rain dynasty's successors have reigned over this country from when they settled here to the present day and the country had actually the lowest poverty rate in the world. 
But the strange thing was that billionaires in the country were relatively few and most people seemed to be all equal in financial status, which Abi thought was a great thing. Well, this place is kind of fascinating and intriguing, Kelly said as soon as they entered their hotel room. I totally agree. This place just has a very different vibe. It is just so absolutely beautiful, simply breathtaking, Kelly. I wonder why this place isn't as famous as other countries. I also noticed there are only a few tourists around. It's because this kingdom isn't into tourism, Abby. As I mentioned before, they are quite private so it's hard to get in here without an invitation. This country is one of the hardest places to visit in the world. The process of visiting here is reportedly hard, unnecessarily complicated, slow and very expensive, so tourists feel discouraged to come here. Oh, that's strange. It's like they don't want to earn from the tourism industry, or they don't like the tourist influx. I can't blame them though. If I lived here, I wouldn't want tourists roaming around and potentially ruining the landscape and the natural untouched beauty of this place by their presence. Emin. Maybe that's why they are very strict. I don't really know. Like I told you, this country isn't like any other country. Now, let's stop talking about that and let's go out and enjoy the view and the food here is great, too. Abby, let's go. Abby and Kelly roamed around the kingdom's capital that day. They visited a lot of places and ate different varieties of food. The place was very pleasant and just lovely and clean, the cleanest city Abby had ever been to. There were no towering skyscrapers and no heavy traffic, no pollution, nor chaos. Trees that were lined on either side on every road and highway were blooming that day and it just looked majestically awe-inspiring. The place was just filled with beautiful people and beautiful things. The two best friends had taken countless photos of each other as they continued their joyful tour until night finally came. Abby and Kelly went back to their hotel early because their whole day escapade tired them out. Abby was also happy because she didn't feel much of the loneliness from missing Alex that day. She felt like their adventure had soothed her heart so for the first time since she last saw him, she slept soundly that night. Before they knew it, the sun was already shining brightly up in the sky when they woke up. The ball that they had to attend was not until 6 p.m. that night so they had plenty of time to spare. The two girls went shopping for the most gorgeous dresses they could find and then found matching shoes. After that, they spent the rest of the day getting massages, manicures, pedicures and getting their hair and makeup done closer to the time. A lot of preparation had gone into their persons for this occasion which was why, even though this country was known for having the most beautiful people in the world, Abby and Kelly fitted right in. Once the girls were finally dressed up, they headed out of the hotel. The trip towards the palace was unexpectedly long. Kelly told Abby that they were heading to the country's palace, the place where the king and his family resided so Abby was excited and she was anticipating to see such a dreamy place. However, once the palace came into her view, Abby's mouth hung open like a little kid who was on their way to Disneyland and just had caught their first glimpse of the magical place. Her expectations drastically failed in comparison to the beauty she saw at that moment. Abby was in awe as she looked at the palace which sat on a rugged hill, overlooking the city. The colossal six-story structure in the shape of two huge cuboids were connected in a flat angle and covered by two adjacent high gable roofs. The sight of the snow-covered mountains behind the palace, the tall pine trees that surrounded it and the lights could be seen through the windows made Abby feel like she had walked into a closet and walked out into the land of Narnia. The palace looked like it was frozen in time. The location almost felt sacred because of its history. Kelly said that this palace had stood on that same hill for centuries, it was said that the royal family buried their ancestors under that hill. Abby just couldn't take her eyes off it. 
Abi and Kelly entered the palace complex through the symmetrical gatehouse flanked by two stair towers. They drove down the passage through the gatehouse which led them directly into the vast courtyard. There were guards everywhere and the security was extremely tight but because of the invitation that Kelly was holding, the girls easily entered the place. When the girls alighted from the car, their eyes roamed around to take everything in. The entire palace was sprinkled with numerous decorative chimneys and ornamental turrets, the court front with colorful frescoes while the court side gable was crowned with a black-colored dragon. Seeing those black-colored dragons immediately reminded Abby about Alex's tattoo. She felt kind of strange seeing it but she quickly shrugged the thoughts from her head, thinking that it was just coincidence. The girls were then brought to the massive ballroom, located on the eastern, courtside wing of the palace, a place designed for court festivities. The grand ball was held to celebrate the king's birthday and the magnificent and luxurious massive ballroom was already packed with many people dressed in their finest. This event was held every year and every single year, almost all of the invited guests turned up because it was a rare chance for them to see the royal family of this country and also to talk business with them. It was exactly six in the evening when the two absolutely stunning girls entered the ballroom. All eyes turned to look at them, causing Kelly to smile inwardly. Although she knew that most of these eyes were drawn by Abby's beauty, she was still overjoyed because her friend had easily outshone these beautiful natives just by dressing up. However, Abby didn't care and didn't even pay much attention to the looks she was getting because she was too amazed by the scene before them. The ballroom was just breathtaking. The two walls along the rectangular room had big, beautiful windows beneath arches at two-meter intervals. Golden chandeliers, with twenty-four candles on each one, hung from the roof on either side of the room as well as through the middle of the room. But the cream de la cream of the room was its ceiling. The big arched ceiling that joined the two walls together had many pictures that looked to have been painted up there, akin to Michelangelo's painting of the Sistine Chapel. If one wanted to know what life was like back in the Renaissance, they would only need to go to this room and look up to be instantly transported back in time. Abby could not take her eyes off the intricate display until Kelly pulled her back to the present by taking her arm and walking towards a different spot to stay in which was near the open terrace overlooking a beautiful lake from afar. They stayed there for a bit to enjoy the out-of-this-world view. The sun was already gone and the sky had started to become gray, but the breathtaking view inside and outside the palace only became even more blindingly beautiful. Ah, It's so beautiful. It would have been perfect if we had our boyfriends beside us right now. Kelly sighed as she leaned on the railing. Oops, I forgot that I actually don't have a boyfriend. Should I go and pick up one of those gorgeous guys? Kelly continued blabbering but she received no replies. Hey Abby, what? Kelly turned to her right and was surprised. It was because the girl she was talking to was no longer beside her. She looked around the crowded room but she couldn't see any sign of her friend. Abby, she called out softly, her eyes still roaming around. God, where did she go? Kelly started to worry. She knew what Abby was like. She had brought her to parties like this before and she had always stayed right beside Kelly the entire time. She even dragged Kelly along if she wanted to go to the restroom, so having her suddenly disappear like this made Kelly feel slightly uneasy. What if some bad guy fell in love with her gorgeous Abby in one glance and decided to kidnap her? Kelly was starting to worry a bit. She kept calling Abby's phone but there was no answer. When Kelly still couldn't find her anywhere inside the ballroom, she checked the restroom but still nothing. Out of options, she decided to approach the guards that were standing just outside the place. Kelly frantically walked towards the entrance but before she could reach the guards, she accidentally bumped into someone. Og. What the- Kelly was about to curse but the instant she saw the face of the man whom she bumped into, 
her words got stuck in her throat. Kelly started to have pink bubbles float around her face as she gazed up at the man who was holding her. Miss Hooligan, the gorgeous man said and Kelly immediately snapped out of her bubbly daze the moment she heard the words that left his mouth. Who dot Lee gone? Who are you calling hooligan? Her veins started to pop. She couldn't believe that this pretty prince called her gorgeous self that damn name again. She was dressed up as a real lady today and she wasn't bragging but she knew she was at least good looking. Maybe not as beautiful as Aubie, but she at least beat most of the girls in this palace when it came to the beauty department. And yet, how could he still call her hooligan the moment he saw her? Well, you still haven't introduced yourself to me, he replied simply. His pretty face looked like he didn't even know what was wrong with calling her that. What are you doing here, anyway, he added as he let go of her. This damn prince. But Kelly, whose hands were clinging on to his neck, didn't let go. Actually, I came here to find you, pretty boy. She gave him a little sexy wink as she licked her lips while gazing up at him and Kai seemed to have felt goosebumps as his eyes widened. The first time I saw you, I decided to pursue you, she continued, now talking like a professional flirt, even biting her lips like she was drooling over some delicious food. Kai's lips voluntarily parted. It was obvious that he was shocked at the girl's attitude and the words she was spouting. Kelly chuckled seeing his expression. Could it be that this guy had never been caught by perverted creatures out there? Oh ho, could it be that this pretty boy was still a virgin? As Kelly's mind started to get naughty, the man seemed to have finally woken from his shock and in the next second, he forcefully unclasped the girl's hands from around his neck and he started to run away. He hastily walked away from her as if he was trying his very best to get away from an annoying woman who suddenly wanted to become his sugar mommy. Wait. Please wait. Kelly chased him. The man didn't enter the ballroom. He instead headed to another hallway heading to another part of the palace. Kelly finally remembered about Abby. She couldn't believe she was so easily distracted by that damn prince, and she ran after the man as fast as she could. When the distance between them kept increasing despite her running as fast as she could with heels on, Kelly kicked away her damn heels and her speed immediately skyrocketed. In no time, Kelly crashed into him from behind and her hands instantly wrapped around the man's waist. Caught you. Hee <laughs> hee, she laughed as she panted. Kai jolted and felt goosebumps again especially when he heard her chuckle like a pervert. What the hell is with this girl? He never thought that this hooligan also had this side. Let go, hooligan. I don't know you. If you keep chasing me, I'll ask the guards to throw you out, the man threatened. Oh. Are you scared of a dainty and delicate woman like me, Prince? Her voice became extremely sweet and she looked up at him with her big round puppy dog eyes that sent shivers down the man's spine again. Did this girl have some kind of mental illness? She was so cool and badass the last time he saw her but now. Kai attempted to peel her off from him but the girl's grip was super strong. Dainty. Delicate. She was clearly a hooligan with super strength. No matter what he did, he couldn't peel her off without having to use brute force. Let go now if you don't want to get hurt, the man threatened again. Oh, such a pretty boy threatening me is cute, she replied and Kai finally lost it. Guards, he called out and Kelly's eyes widened. No, no, no. Don't call them. I'm chasing you because I want to ask for help. Kelly turned frantic once she saw the guards coming after just one call from the damned prince. Get this girl out of here, he ordered and Kelly clung on him harder. However. I'm sorry. Please listen. My friend Abby is missing. I need your help, she begged. 
The guards were about to touch Kali to pull her away from Kai when the man stopped them with one smooth gesture. What? Abi? You mean, Abigail Chin is here? Kai asked her, his voice suddenly becoming serious and his face looked like he was dumbstruck. Yes. She was with me but just minutes after we entered the ballroom, she suddenly disappeared. She's not answering my calls and I can't find her anywhere. She doesn't usually leave my side at parties like this. Please help me look for her. Kai's face became grave when he heard her. He suddenly gripped Kelly's shoulders as he spoke. Why did you bring her here? He was obviously angered and acting as though bringing Abby here was a disaster. What was going on? Why was he acting like this? What was so wrong with her bringing her friend to this place? Ha! Huh? Why can't I bring her here? Kelly, who was all confused by the man's unexpected outburst asked him in both curiosity and worry. But the man didn't answer her. He simply shook his head before he ran his fingers through his hair. This is bad. He mumbled, causing Kelly's heart to beat wildly. What do you mean? Where did you last see her? He cut her off. In the ballroom. Kai held her hand as he led her back to the ballroom. Are you sure you looked for her carefully? Could she have gone to the restroom? Have you checked there? I looked around the ballroom for minutes and also checked the restroom but there was no sign of her. Once they entered the ballroom, the two started scanning the crowd again, looking for her but the result was the same. If she was in there, Kelly would have been able to detect her straight away because of the unique color of her dress but Abby was nowhere to be found. Damn, she's not here. Kai cursed. His reaction was making Kelly feel like something really bad had happened to her best friend and she started to panic. Before she could speak, Kai pulled her with him again and they headed back to that hallway Kai had run through a while ago. Kai dragged her along as he ran as if someone was chasing after them. Thankfully Kelly had removed her high heels otherwise she wouldn't have been able to keep up with him. They turned around a corner and then they climbed up two flights of stairs. Kelly didn't have time to admire the magnificent surroundings as they sped past. Luckily Kelly was so fit that even a marathon wouldn't be that hard for her, so their little dash didn't exhaust her. They entered a huge chamber which appeared to be the study room. Kai still didn't let go of Kelly's hand as they walked inside the study room and then through to the open doors leading to another veranda. A man was sitting nonchalantly on the edge, almost looking like a grim reaper waiting for the next soul that he would collect. The wind blew his black coat and his dark as midnight hair danced under its caress. Kelly gaped at the sight of him. He was just so breathtaking but his breathtaking appearance didn't outshine the darkness and coldness he was emitting. Kelly couldn't help but imagine that he might be the reincarnation of the god of slaughter or something. How could he be so beautiful yet scary at the same time? He was not even giving her a moment to enjoy his sight because she already felt like she was inside a horror movie. This pretty boy next to her holding onto her hand was the only thing that was stopping her from dashing away and running for her life. Alex. Kai called out and the man, who was still gazing into the darkness like he could see miles ahead of him, finally glanced at them. Kelly voluntarily hid behind Kai once their eyes met for a moment. Gah. He's so scary. Is this guy Satan's son or something? Abby, I want to go home now. Where are you? And why was this man sitting there? Is he not afraid of falling and dying? What? Alex simply said. Alex. Kai hesitated. Abigail is. As expected, the moment Kai mentioned that name, the calm lake started to form ripples. He turned and looked at Kai impatiently with squinted eyes. She's here, Kai finally said and Alex's dark aura blazed even more. 
His eyes were immediately covered with icy flames. Where is she? Why didn't you bring her here with her friend? His voice was as hard as a rock and as cold as an ancient glacier as his gaze fell on the girl hiding behind Kai. He knew that the girl was his little fruit's friend. But Kelly was terrified. She had never been terrified to this extent in her life. She subconsciously clenched Kai's hand and as hard as she tried, she just couldn't speak. Was this the same Alexander Chi Nobby was dating? Was this the same man who made it rain inside the house just to kiss Abby? Kelly was shocked. She couldn't help but want to worship Abby for actually being with this man. Maybe it was true that only angels could stand right next to devils without dying from fear. Noticing Kelly's fear, Kai stood before her, completely hiding her behind him before he looked up at Alex's menacing eyes. Alex, she's missing. He told him and as expected, the man blazed with an even more intense darkness, as if Hell's doors had just been opened. Kelly subconsciously flinched and immediately tugged Kai's shirt when she heard Alex jump down to the floor. She said that she went missing just a few minutes after they entered the ballroom. Alex's jaws clenched. Gather everyone and tell them all to look for her. Alex ordered as he stormed out of the door like a devil who was now ready to go and create chaos and destruction. Kai let out a sigh of relief once Alex left. Are you okay? He asked the still mute Kelly who was hiding behind him. Why yeah, she replied. Kai turned around to see that she had started sweating, despite the cold wind. He knew that Alex scared the hell out of her. Don't worry. We'll find her. Stay here and wait. No, I'm coming with you. Kelly clung onto the man's arm tightly as she looked at him with an expression that said she wouldn't let go. I want to go and look for Abby, too. Please. Kai saw a mixture of worry and determination on Miss Hooligan's face, so in the end, Kai could only give in. They finally left the study and joined the search outside the ballroom, along with the many guards who were also searching for Abby inside the palace. No one inside the ballroom knew what was going on outside apart from the people that were secretly searching for Abby inside the ballroom. The royal family, who also knew nothing at this time, kept the guests entertained with dinner and dancing and speeches and because Kelly and Abby didn't know anyone else at the party, they weren't missed by any of the guests. The palace was huge but the guards seemed to be able to go through the whole place in a matter of hours to search for Abby. As time passed, Kelly didn't hear any good news and her worry increased. No matter where they looked, they just couldn't seem to find her anywhere. After some time, the guards looked through the security footage. They found no footage of Kelly nor Abby at the veranda where they were standing so they couldn't tell if Abby had walked off by herself or if someone had taken her. They did find that there were three cars that left the palace after the girl's disappearance. She might have been kidnapped, Alex, Kai said while Alex remained silent. I'll have the troops search for her outside the palace. Have them track those cars, Alex finally spoke and Kai left him along with Kelly. Alexander stood there by the main gate, his face hard as stone, as his fingers curled into tight fists. He stared outside the huge palace gate and looked at the lights of the vast city with eyes covered in danger and pure darkness. However, instead of going after those three cars, he stayed right where he was. He slowly turned and gazed up at the old majestic castle towering before him and his eyes squinted. Abigail. He muttered before his feet moved forward towards the palace entrance. By this point, the ball had already ended. It actually ended an hour earlier because the news had reached the king's ear. Of course, they didn't let any of the guests find out about the missing person. They simply reasoned out that the king wanted the party to end a little early because he was tired. Of course, all the guests knew how old the king was so they completely understood and left early, as requested. 
The king and queen were inside the throne room when Alexander barged in. Looking like a villain, Alex stood there, looking very calm. However, the royal family, who knew what Alexander was like more than anyone else, felt tensed when they saw him look like that. They knew that he was like an unpredictable volcano that could erupt without any warning and once he erupted, he would be unstoppable. There was no telling the extent of damage he would cause. Alexander, is there something wrong? The king spoke. King Leviu's reign was already quite old but he still held himself with the dignity of a powerful and commanding king. His wife, Queen Leah, who was only a few years younger than the king, still looked younger than her age. She was elegantly beautiful even with most of her hair already gray. Alexander didn't answer him and just smiled as he scanned all the faces of the royal family, as if he was looking for something, a clue maybe, from their expressions. Apart from the king and queen, the four princesses, still dressed in their finery, were also in the room as well as some high officials. None of the princes were present in the throne room. The queen then approached Alex carefully. Alex, is this about the missing girl? Her voice was sincere and filled with concern as she spoke to Alex. Again, the man didn't answer. His eyes squinted as he continued to search each person's face, almost as if he was trying to read their mind through their eyes. And then, Bring her out, he suddenly said but his tone was still quite calm. Alexander, what are you saying? The old king finally lost his patience and his voice thundered inside the hall. Alex smirked, completely unfazed by the king's tone. Don't test my patience. Where is she? he again asked. His voice was melodic and his lips curved up into a sardonic smile which didn't reach his eyes. Though his expression looked pleasant, the temperature in the room suddenly dropped to below freezing and everybody felt themselves tense up involuntarily. Alex, I heard that the guards are chasing some cars that left the palace after the girl disappeared. Shouldn't you be out there searching for her rather than looking for her here and asking us? You already searched the entire palace, right? The guards already said she's not here. One of the princesses, the second to the youngest one, named Mira, was the one who spoke. The tall, elegant, beautiful, and youthful princess talked with a confidence that could only be gained from being born as a royal. However, her confidence soon faded once Alexander set his eyes on her. The princess held her breath as Alex stepped towards her, locking her with the intensity of his gaze. Those calm and dangerous eyes of his never moved from her face as he walked closer to her, his dark cold aura blazing with the fires of hell. The princess subconsciously stepped back as Alex continued walking closer to her, glaring into her eyes like he was piercing through her soul. The danger in his eyes turned uncontrollable and she instantly felt as if he was almost going to do something brutal. But before Alexander could reach her, the queen suddenly stood between them. Alex, please calm down, Queen Leah urged, her face filled with worry. However, Alex just let out a menacing laugh. Ha ha ha. Calm down. How could I calm down when my little lamb is nowhere to be found, he asked. He still looked relatively calm but everyone knew that the volcano would soon erupt if they didn't do anything. They had to find this girl or else something worse than their worst nightmare might happen. Alex, we will help you look for her. The queen did her best to coax him but Alexander was a solid, unwavering glacier that no fire could melt. Oh, help me, huh? Of course you should. He told her before his gaze flew back to the princess. Now, step back. I have business with your daughter he coldly and heartlessly said, causing the queen to feel terrified. She looked at Princess Mira with millions of questions in her eyes. She knew that Alex was targeting the princess but what could her daughter have done to earn this treatment? Alex, wait please. What do you mean? 
Before the queen could complete her statement, Alex already walked past her towards Princess Mira. However, before he could reach the princess, the king finally moved and stood between Alex and his daughter. Alexander King Levius pulled Princess Mira behind him and stood before Alex, his expression now looking very grave. King Levius, step aside. This has nothing to do with you, Alex uttered as his eyes blazed coldly at the man. The queen was about to approach them again because she was afraid that a fight might explode between the two but the king stopped her with his next words. Leah, stop. Do not interfere any more," the king said without averting his gaze away from Alex. Vigilance and intense alertness were flooding in his eyes. Move, King Levius. Alexander's patience had long reached its limit and the warning in his voice this time was tinged with the highest form of danger. Alexander, you think my daughter is the one behind that girl's disappearance, right? Let me handle her so stay put, the king calmly said. Gone was the man who let out that loud, thundering sound earlier as he became incredibly calm and careful. The king could not let Alexander start a fight in this place with all his family here. He knew that if a fight broke out, that would be disastrous. This problem needed to be solved as fast as possible. They needed to find that girl very quickly or Alex might really do something even worse than what he imagined. Without waiting for Alex's reaction, the king turned towards the princess, grabbed her by the shoulders and he cornered her by the wall. Mira, where is she? The king immediately asked the girl. He looked at the girl's expression and he knew right then why Alex had targeted her. Mira may have hid her intentions very well and managed to fool everyone with the innocent and noble look on her face, but there was no way she could fool him nor Alex. Her words and expressions were enough for him to deduce that she was hiding something so of course, Alex would pick up immediately on that. He knew that Alex wasn't wrong and that this daughter of his had something to do with the girl's disappearance. There was also one more incriminating thing that he knew about this daughter of his and that was the fact that Mira had been in love with Alex for a very long time. Even though the princess wasn't the only one who may have wanted to be with Alex, this daughter of his was the only one who would be foolish enough to do something like this right under Alex's nose. She was the only one who would act rashly like this, not thinking about the consequences of her actions. There was no one he could suspect but her. The king's jaws clenched hard as he glared at his foolish daughter. Mira, if you still want to live, spit it out, he threatened. Now, he demanded but the girl just shook her head. I don't know anything. Father, please believe me. I was with mother the entire time, how could I kidnap someone? The princess started tearing up. That's right, Levius, Alex. Mira was with me the entire time. Stop suspecting her like that. The queen stepped in. Father, what evidence do you have to suspect that I am the one behind this? Please, I never did anything wrong. I don't know what you are talking about. Levius, listen to your daughter. She's telling the truth. Queen Leah urged her husband but the man was unswerving in his certainty about Alex's accusation. He hated to be like this towards his daughter but he knew Alex well and he had never been wrong about things like this. Ignoring his wife's plea, the king returned his gaze to his daughter. Mira, I'm only going to ask you one last time. Where is the girl? This is your last chance to save yourself. If you cross Alexander, you will regret it, the king said in a stern and threatening tone. He was extremely worried for his daughter but he needed to let her know the gravity of the situation because he knew what Alex was capable of. Father, how could you not believe your own daughter, she uttered in disbelief. Because I know that Alex is right, was all he replied. The girl gritted her teeth and shook her head, denying her involvement in any of this. The queen forced her way between them and held her daughter. 
Stop this now, leave yous. I am not going to let you treat my daughter like this. The queen was now angry but more than that, she was extremely worried. They were becoming so emotional that they didn't notice Alex's disappearance. Enough with this nonsense. Alex's words boomed in the great hall as he walked back inside. He was dragging a dead soldier's body with his hand and when he reached the trio, he dropped it on the floor, right before the princess. An hour ago, while everyone was searching the palace, the first thing Alex fixed his eyes on were the royal guards. He knew that if he wanted to get any clues, he must investigate every single one of them. These royal guards were the only ones who were able to move around the palace freely without question and without garnering much attention. The people who were behind Abigail's disappearance would almost certainly use the soldiers to do the dirty job or at least be in league with a few of them to be able to escape unnoticed. During the search, Alex's keen senses noticed a faint scent from one of the soldiers which was unusual. When Abigail was with Alex, he noticed that the girl wasn't fond of perfume so he couldn't tell if the scent he smelled was from Abigail. However, the scent was feminine and that scent was enough of a clue for Alex to interrogate that soldier because it was strange for any soldier to have a scent like that. Alex immediately took the soldier aside to ask him a few questions. Alex was expecting him to tell tales such as he had a secret meeting with his lover or some such thing but before Alex could even say a word, the soldier killed himself by biting and swallowing a poison pill. This act was one of the things that the kingdom had kept in place from the ancient times to prevent them from spilling any secrets or classified information about the royal family if they were suddenly captured and tortured. So, the fact that the soldier did this the moment he was about to question him was enough answer for Alex. This kind of loyalty would only be reserved for the members of the royal family. These royal guards had absolute loyalty to their masters, so if one did this kind of thing, Alex was certain that the one he was working with was a member of the royal family. These soldiers wouldn't willingly die just for anyone. Princess this is the soldier you worked with, right? Now don't waste any more of my time or else. Alexander left the sentence hanging because his intentions were very clear as his gaze locked onto the princess's eyes. Princess Mira knew that he was very serious. She knew that he wouldn't hesitate to kill her, like he did to her guard. The princess's lips began to tremble in fear. She knew that Alexander wasn't someone she could mess with. In fact, nobody would dare to mess with him, not even her father, who was king of this kingdom. However, she never thought that that woman would bring out this kind of reaction out of Alex. She thought that her plan was flawless and that nobody would be able to get any evidence incriminating her, even if they suspected her. Unfortunately, she didn't count on Alex's reaction. This was far more extreme than what she had seen before that even her parents couldn't do anything. Fear ran through her entire body and she knew what she had to do. Before she knew it, she fell down on the floor as she clung to her mother as if her strength suddenly left her. Her reaction made everyone finally understand that she indeed knew something even if she may not be the mastermind of the whole thing. She, she's in the underground dungeon, she finally whispered. Everyone was utterly shocked. Alex's eyes darkened as if the faint light of life in them had entirely disappeared. Everyone knew that that dungeon was the most dangerous place in the palace. In ancient times, the dungeon was where they left the traitors and enemies to let them rot inside. The dark dungeon was a large maze filled with many traps that would cut and or maim or wound at every turn and this was a place where no one ever escaped from. Worse yet, many rodents and poisonous insects also made their home in the darkness as they waited for their next meal. It was created to torture anyone who entered it before eventually dying at a dead end, because there was no way out. Even the king looked like he was about to pass out when he heard her. Everybody was silent as they all started to realize how grave this situation was. 
The first thing the king did was look at Alex with intense alertness. He saw how Alex looked like he had turned to a lifeless vessel and immediately knew how dire the situation was. This was extremely disastrous. When was the last time Alexander had ever looked like this? If that girl was dead, what would this man do? Come. Alex's voice had gone beyond terrifying. He sounded like he was ready to slaughter an entire clan. He grabbed the princess by the arm and dragged her out of the throne room while everyone just watched in horror. Mother. Father. Please, save me, the princess yelled but everyone just stood there frozen, even the queen. The king ran his fingers through his hair. This was it. The worst case scenario. The possibility of that girl still being alive at this point was zero. Nobody had ever come out of that place alive since it was first built. They couldn't believe that their esteemed princess had such a dark heart to plan on executing someone. Even the king never expected this. When did his daughter become this heartless? Leave yous. Please save your daughter. You're the king. Do something. King Levius looked at his wife's distraught face and he himself felt a deep despair for his daughter. He was a king, but he was getting old and he was not the same strong man he was when he was younger. His daughter had done the unforgivable and she had to face the consequences of her actions. He had never felt so powerless in his life. In the end, he looked away without answering his wife and headed out of the hall to go after Alexander. Everyone finally snapped out of their shock and instantly followed him. The tunnel towards the dungeon was dark and long. The princess continued begging Alex but the man didn't seem to hear her. He almost looked like the walking dead, devoid of any human emotion. Once they stopped inside an ancient cave-like chamber, Alex dropped her on the floor, near the well-like hole covered with metal bars and chains. Open it! He ordered and the princess crawled in fear as she quickly unlocked the chains and moved the metal cover off it. Once it was open, Alex took the chains and he chained the princess in a way that was impossible for anyone to unlock her. Alexander glared down at her, a look that was enough to kill all her hopes of survival, because that one glance told her that if he didn't find Abigail alive, she would die an even more painful death than what Abigail would have gone through. The next moment, as the king and others entered the chamber, Alex jumped down the hole. By the time the king and the others reached the dungeon's entrance, Alex was already gone. They heard noises coming from the hole as they approached it. King Levius gritted his teeth as he looked down the seemingly endless abyss. Abigail. He heard Alex's voice echo as he called out for Abby. On the edge of the room by the wall, the princess started begging for her life. Mother, father, save me. Alex, he's going to kill me. The queen ran to her daughter and she started weeping as she approached her chained child. Oh my god, Mira, what have you done? The queen was extremely distraught. The royal family had done their best not to anger Alex and to stay on good terms with him all these years and yet, in an instant, all their hard work was burnt to ashes because this child of hers did this. Everyone was worried and terrified and shocked. They couldn't believe that Alexander didn't even hesitate to jump inside that abyss for that girl. Who was that girl that made Alex act like he was willing to search even the depths of hell just for her? Even King Levius finally realized the extent of what Alex would be willing to do for that girl. Alexander was no longer the same. He wasn't the same Alex who wouldn't bat an eye even if his so-called lover at the time got killed accidentally or not. He wasn't the same man who would let all the royal family's every ridiculous action slide like he didn't care. He wasn't the same man who swore he wouldn't claim the life of any of the royal family no matter what happened. He had changed for that woman and what was even more ridiculous was that he had only been with her for a few days. Looking at the chains around Myra's body, 
the queen had already given up trying to save her. These chains were so thick and strong that it would take at least a few days to cut through it. It only had one key and that was down in the dungeon with Alex right now. She knew that Alex would never let her live if he was to find that girl was dead in that dungeon. All of them knew it. What was worse was that all of them were certain that the girl was already dead. There was no escaping that dungeon. Even if she stayed put and didn't trigger any of the hidden traps, all the poisonous creatures would have already gotten her or forced her to run towards the traps. All of them knew that, and that was why the queen started to weep. King Levius' expression was serious as he sighed. No matter how he thought about it, the only way for Alexander to calm down after this was for Mira to pay using her own life. What could he do? How could he calm Alex down without him hurting his daughter? Could he use force? No, that was futile. Could he use reason? Alexander was beyond reasoning with. This was an entirely new Alexander that they were facing and where they might have been able to talk to Alex if he was his old self, this Alex would not be willing to hear them out. He loved his daughter but love won't be able to save her from her fate. The only way to save her was if that girl was found alive. Father, please save me. That's right. Brother Zeke. Please call brother to come and save me. Please. He's the only one who can help me now. Mira continued pleading as tears rolled down her face. Gone was the arrogant, self-assured demeanor as her body crouched down on the ground. She trembled as her fear settled deep in her bones. She knew she was done for. She shouldn't have done it. She now regretted doing what she did but it was too late for regrets. There was no way she would get out of this unscathed, if death wasn't waiting for her already. Levius, that's right, Ezekiel could do something. Queen Leah begged in between her sobs. Levius. We. Leah. King Levius' voice turned unbelievably cold. He too was now on edge. That woman, that woman is the only person Alex had ever cared about like this. I have never seen him act this way about anyone before. This isn't a simple issue and you know that. His deep voice echoed inside the darkness. Please don't forget who Alex is and what he's capable of doing. Having Zeke and Alexander end up fighting against each other is the last thing we ever want to happen. King Levius' words made the queen kneel down as her mind reminded her about something and those thoughts crushed all her hopes. Time passed by and Alex finally came out. His body was covered in scratches, cuts and wounds and blood flowed down his skin like small rivers. He looked like the devil emerging from the depths of hell as his eyes burned red with killing intent. However, at that moment, there was also a glint of hope in his eyes. She's not inside, he said and everyone was shocked. Even the good as dead princess returned to life. Where is she? Alex's deadly gaze fell on the girl as he mercilessly pinched her chin. Hey Alex. I watched her fall in the hole. There's no way that she's not inside, the princess said, haltingly between sobs. Mira, please tell the truth, the queen urged. I am telling the truth. She really fell inside. The dungeon only has one key. It isn't possible that someone else could have opened it to save her. Me and that guard both left after we locked the door she explained as she cried. You saw the chains and the cover still on there when we got here. It's impossible for the girl to come out. It's impossible that she's not in there. The queen turned towards Alex. Alex, are you sure she's not there? She asked but Alex was so angry that it was now becoming out of control. He unlocked the chains around the princess and everyone was surprised as they all thought that Alex was letting her go because the girl wasn't inside. 
However, the next thing he did made everyone's eyes widen in horror. Alexander suddenly lifted the princess up and held her over the hole. Go look for her yourself then, he said coldly, his eyes and heart devoid of any emotions, as if he had become a demon. Before the girl could even react, he flung her down into the dungeon as if he was throwing trash away into a rubbish bin, and a deafening scream echoed throughout the room. Hours ago. Abby gasped as she woke up on a dusty floor in a very cold and dark room, or at least that was what she thought. The last thing she remembered was having a conversation with Kelly before she was suddenly pulled behind a thick curtain near the veranda before she suddenly lost consciousness. When Abby gained consciousness again, she thought that she was having a nightmare. The entire room was dark and even though her eyes were open, she could see nothing. Everything was pitch black that she couldn't even see her own hands. Abby started to panic. Her breath became shallow and her heart sped up in fear. Where was she? Where was Kelly? What was going on? How was she going to get out of here? Abby forced herself to calm down and think. She needed a clear mind to be able to get out of here. She put her hands down on the ground as she tried to get up and found that she was lying on bare ground, not tiles or wood or concrete, just plain dirt. Was she inside a cave or something? She crawled until she hit a wall. She ran her hands along the wall and noticed that they were made of bricks which meant that this place was somehow built by men. As the thought crossed her mind, Abby started to think that she may be in a dungeon under the palace. That was very possible because of the man-made wall built out of bricks. This wasn't a natural thing so she couldn't be in some cave. Dungeon seemed more plausible considering the fact that she was just inside a palace before she woke up in this place. H. Hello. Abby said out loud and when she heard her echo, this gave her more evidence that she might really be inside a dungeon. Abby started to tremble despite her resolve to keep calm. Was this real? Was she really inside a dungeon? Abby prayed and hoped that this was just a dream, a nightmare she could escape from if she just woke up. Forcing herself to think that this was just a nightmare, Abby slowly stood up. She kept her hand on the wall as she took a few steps forward. However, she had only taken half a dozen steps when, on the last step, she heard the sound of metal hitting against metal. Abby jumped backwards as soon as she heard it but not before she felt something sharp cut her thigh. Ah, she yelped and she felt something warm flowing down her leg soon after. She knew that the liquid flowing down her leg was her own blood. Abby was terrified and her knees began to weaken. She had a hunch that if she walked any further, she might die. Who knew what else was out there? Abby stood frozen as she pressed her back to the wall, close to where she woke up from, and tears began to fall from her eyes. Why? Why was this happening to her? What was going on? Why was she here? As she stood there, feeling the pain from her wound, she realized this was real. She wasn't dreaming. Hello. Abby forced herself to shout. Can anyone hear me? Help, she yelled again and again but no one answered, only her echo answered her desperate calls. Was she going to die here? Was this the end? Abby shook her head to desperately rid herself of those thoughts. She didn't want to die yet, not in a place like this. She hadn't said goodbye to her family, Kelly or Alex. Her wishes were still unfulfilled. She still had so many things left to do, to experience. How did things end up like this? What was she doing in this place? Abby didn't know why, but in that moment of despair, Alex's words suddenly rang in her head. This is just a little taste of hell, Abigail. I told you, you can't handle it. As those words echoed in her head, Abby felt her heart tear apart. 
She remembered Alex's face so clearly in her mind when he warned her and a realization dawned on her. Did this incident have something to do with Alex? As she thought about it, she couldn't help but think that this incident might be related to him. The black dragons in the courtyard looked very similar to the dragon tattoo on his back. She also had a strange feeling of deja vu the instant she set foot in this country. This feeling reminded her of the cold aura that surrounded Alex like a shield. Of course she had shrugged it off at the start as just her imagination running wild but she couldn't shake this feeling now, especially the moment she saw those black dragons. She didn't know how this place was connected to Alex. She really was clueless when it came to him. All she knew was that if this was the hell Alex was talking about, could she really allow herself to crumble down now? Could she really not handle this? Could she afford to do nothing but wait and die here? Was this the end? Was she really naive in thinking that she could handle the hell Alex was talking about? Abby's tears stopped falling. No, I can't die here. This hell, I can handle this. I will get out of here, she told herself. She would not be a helpless little lamb just meekly walking towards the slaughterhouse. She was going to fight this and get out of here. If this was a part of Alex's hell, Abby was determined to face this head on and live. No matter what the result, no matter what was waiting for her, she would fight. That was the only choice she had left. After all, she was the one who jumped into his life. She had to show him that she could handle being part of his world. Abby took a few deep breaths to clear away the fog of negativity from her mind. Not many people knew this about her, but Abby actually had an exceptional sense of hearing. She had discovered when she was just a young child that she was able to hear things that other people couldn't. When she was at school, she would listen to the teacher but then at some point, she would hear sounds of animals running around in the forest and when she concentrated enough, she was able to follow the path of the animal as it ran along in the woods. This was how she was able to narrowly avoid those sharp metal things that cut her thigh, because she heard the sound of them being triggered so she was able to jump out of the way. She had never really tried to hone this gift because she never needed to but in this situation, she was thankful that she at least had something she could use to her advantage. She knew that if she concentrated enough, she would be able to hear the slightest unusual noises and doing that, she might be able to find a way out of here. So Abby closed her eyes and focused her senses on her heart until the only thing she could hear was her heartbeat and the sound of her quiet breaths. After a few more minutes, Abby was in that state of meditation and that was when she started to act. She ripped a small strip of cloth from her dress and wrapped it around her wounded thigh to act as a tourniquet. She then bent down to pick up a handful of small stones from the ground to use as a guide and got up again before she threw a small stone right next to her foot and listened to the sound it made. It released a solid thump. That sound meant safety. It meant that there was nothing under it except for rocks and dirt. Abby threw another small stone in front of her and heard the sound of rock hitting metal. It seemed that whatever had cut her was on the ground in front of her, blocking her path. The next thing she did was throw a stone as far and as hard as she could in front of her to determine if that was a pathway or a dead end. The stone hit a wall with a thud not too far away from her so she did the same thing again, throwing a stone to her left and then behind her. The stone didn't hit anything to her left so she decided that that was the way to go. She turned to the left and threw stones in front of her before she followed it. She had taken about 20 steps before she heard a different sound to the safe thud. It seemed to be the sound of an arrow being released from a bow and Abby immediately jumped back, causing her to yelp in pain as she twisted her ankle on the same leg that was wounded. In the next second, she felt the wind on her face as the arrow rushed out in front of her before hitting a wall with a loud crack. Abby's heart accelerated. 
She gulped as fear and shock took over for a minute or two before she calmed herself down again. Abby was very afraid. She knew just how perilous this situation was so she couldn't afford to slip up. She bent down and grabbed another handful of stones and continued to limp on. Abby had no idea how long she had been walking for or how far away she was from where she started but she kept going, using the stones like a walking stick, feeling out what could be in front of her. She continued on, limping her way through the dark dungeon going to who knew where. But she was lucky because throughout that time, she only triggered two more traps, which she successfully avoided. It seemed to her that some of the traps had already been set off before. Abby grew tired and her hopes began to dwindle as time passed. She leaned on a wall from fatigue and slid down to the ground. She didn't know how much longer she could concentrate like that. It took a lot of mental energy to constantly be on alert and to constantly be listening for every little sound. She was mentally exhausted. She had never had to concentrate this much before and Abby's stamina just wasn't up to it. Abby tried to shake the fatigue from her body but it didn't work. She hadn't eaten anything since lunch and all her energy had been used up. Abby let her body relax and in the next second, she felt thick, warm liquid run down from her nose. From the texture and smell, Abby knew it was blood. She wiped it away using her arm and briefly wondered if this had triggered her illness. As Abby sat in the darkness, her ears pricked at a very faint sound, one that didn't seem to be common in the dungeon. This sound had a melodic ring to it. Abby thought her mind was playing tricks with her but once she concentrated again, the sound became more solid. It wasn't in her imagination. Abby immediately got up. She knew that sound needed an avenue to travel and it traveled faster on solid material than in air so she pressed her ear to the ground and tried to find where it was coming from. It seemed to be coming from ahead of her. Finding new hope, she immediately picked up more stone and with more energy, she went through her process again. After a few minutes, she was stopped by a big wall in front of her. No, she cried inwardly. She fell into a depression. The sound was coming from straight ahead, but she couldn't go any further. This was it. Suddenly, she cried out in frustration and threw the rest of the stones hard on the ground. She clenched her hands into tight fists and started hitting the wall in front of her. Rage and frustration and helplessness filled her soul and she released it on the wall in front of her. But then, in the next second, she heard a loud, grinding noise and immediately went on alert. What was that? It sounded like something massive was moving somewhere to her right, akin to a large, old gate being opened after years of not being in use. It went on for a few seconds until it stopped and everything became silent again. Abby picked up another stone and threw it to her right, expecting the stone to hit a wall and when it didn't Abby was shocked. There was a wall there a few seconds ago. Did a wall really just move by itself? Not stopping to think about it, she immediately worked her way towards the new path. Abby felt the difference the moment she entered the newly opened path. The ground didn't feel like the same dirt ground as the dungeon. It felt cold and smooth, the same as the marble floor in Alex's house. But that wasn't what gave Abby hope. It was the melodic music that seemed to be coming from inside the room. This was the melody that she had been following. Abby winced in pain as she limped further in. Once she was a few steps away from the entrance, she heard a rumbling noise. She could only deduce from the sound that the door was closing. Once the noise stopped, the dark tunnel became quiet again. However, Abby felt that the oxygen was much better in the place where she was now, compared to the damp, earthy smell of the dungeon. A light of hope emerged in Abby's heart. There was still hope for her. Maybe she would be able to leave this place alive and she would get to see Alex again. Determined, 
Abi continued limping in the dark, her heart filled with hope. She focused all her attention to the sound and followed it through the twists and turns of this dark tunnel. As Abi hobbled further inside the tunnel, the sound became more defined and she realized that it was music. Someone was playing a flute. Abi thought that whoever was playing that flute must be her guardian angel. Abi's tears started to flow as she followed the sound, hoping it would lead to life. Back at the dungeon's entrance. Alex, please, have mercy. You promised us that you would never claim the life of any member of the royal family. Please, let Mira go, we can imprison her and punish her, just please, let her live, the queen frantically begged for her daughter's life. However, the glacier didn't even bat an eye. That lover of yours, you have only just been with her for a few days. She's only a commoner. My daughter is royal blood. That girl's life can't be compared to Myra's life. What the queen said was the truth in the ears of everyone who was present. They all thought that whoever the girl was, her life could never hold a candle compared to the princess's life. They had already heard about Alex's new lover. They were also aware that Alexander was fond of her and that he even made her live in his house, protecting her from any harm. But knowing Alexander, they all believed that that girl would still end up like all the other girls in his life in the end. They all believed that Alexander was just not capable of loving anyone. But then, Alexander's sardonic laugh echoed upon hearing the queen's words. The man's already deadly gaze intensified far beyond redemption as he looked at the queen. This was the first time Alexander ever looked at the queen this coldly. Just a commoner, huh? He stopped laughing before he looked at everyone with absolute danger and real threat in his eyes. Listen to me very carefully. If I can't find her before the sun rises. If I can't find her by then, alive. For the first time, they heard a desperate emotion in his voice, I will destroy the house of rain until there is nothing left but ashes. As everyone froze in fear, Alexander left the dungeon, taking the only key with him. This was it, the disaster. They couldn't believe that a woman would make Alexander declare such a terrifying thing but there was no doubt in everyone's mind that Alex was more than serious. Sire, I truly think we should call Prince Ezekiel to come now. This matter is extremely urgent. One of the court officials present at the scene urged and the helpless king simply nodded. If there was anyone they could depend on at this point, it was Ezekiel, but, unfortunately, the prince wasn't in the country right now. Would he make it back in time? In the palace underground, Abigail was starting to lose her strength. It had been hours but the end of the tunnel seemed to be unreachable. She was slow because of the darkness and her throat had dried up. She wanted water so badly. She had long stopped thinking and all she did was continue hobbling along in the dark. Her mind had gone hazy. She was exhausted. She felt like her body had gone numb. The flute was still playing. Although she felt like the sound was getting a little louder in her ear she could tell that the source was still far. How much longer would it take for her to reach the end? Could she reach the end before she passed out? At last, dawn came. Kai and Kelly were already back. The cars that left last night had nothing to do about Abby's disappearance and the girl was nowhere to be found outside the palace. Everyone in the palace was extremely tense. They were all gathered in the throne room. Nobody went to sleep that night. They couldn't believe that a single commoner girl would be able to rock the entire house of rain just like that. As the sky started to lighten, the dread in everyone's heart was getting out of control. At that moment, someone entered and whispered something to the king's ear. The crown prince, Ezekiel, was reportedly nowhere to be found outside the country. The king felt like fainting. This was the time they needed his son the most. 
how could he disappear at this crucial moment? Wait, could it be that he was already in the country? King Levius knew that his son, Ezekiel, was another peculiar man like Alexander. He was the type of man who wouldn't even appear on his father's birthday. Despite being like that, the king believed that his son already knew what was happening. The only question was, why had he not shown himself yet? His family was in great trouble. While the king was trying to figure out what to do, someone entered the throne room again. When they saw who it was, the king and the rest looked like they had seen hope itself. It was because the man who entered was Ezekiel's most trusted right-hand man. However, to everyone's surprise, the man didn't walk towards the king. Instead he walked towards Alexander, who had just kicked the west door open with a bang as he entered the throne room as if he was some ruthless invader. Zeke's right-hand man didn't flinch at Alexander's presence as he approached him. Alex, on the other hand, immediately laid his eyes towards the man who was reaching out a note as he slightly bowed to him. Alexander didn't waste a moment and took the note. The moment he read it, time seemed to have stood still unlike a lightning strike, Alexander disappeared from the room, leaving everyone dumbstruck. Was this crisis finally solved? Was the girl already found? But, was she alive? In no time, Alexander arrived at the foot of the hill. The place was forested and steep, but Alex found the exact spot written on the note in no time at all, as if he didn't need to even have to search for it. The moment he stood there, Alex's blazing eyes fell towards the man who was nonchalantly playing the flute as he sat on the grass with his left knee folded, while he leaned against a wall right next to an old wooden door that was already decaying. Zeke. Alex squinted his eyes as he glared down at him. However, Zeke simply looked up at him, unfazed, as he continued playing the flute, as coolly as ever. Alex was about to approach the man when suddenly, his eyes were drawn towards the old door beside him. With just that, Alex finally realized the reason why Zeke was here and why he was playing. He remembered that the last time he heard Zeke play a flute was back when he was a teenager when they were playing in the castle and had gotten lost. So seeing him playing now was strange and could only mean one thing, that there was a secret passage inside the dungeon that led to this exit that only Ezekiel knew about. Alex rushed towards the door when suddenly, the door moved as he heard a sound coming from the inside. However, before Alex could reach it, the door fell forward, halting him in his tracks, barely missing him. His gaze flew towards the entrance and his eyes widened as he saw someone holding onto the door frame. A hey, Abigail. He uttered as the music stopped. Abigail was blinded by the light so her head was turned towards her right as if to hide from the bright light. She was trembling. Her mind was no longer working. She didn't know if the brightness that flooded her eyes meant that she finally got outside or if she had actually died and had gone to heaven. She noticed that the music had stopped. What did that mean? Was it over? She forced her eyes to open but then darkness slowly swallowed her whole before she could even lift her eyelids open. Abigail! Alex called out as he caught her in his arms. He immediately looked for a pulse and he was utterly relieved when he felt her heart still beating and that she was still breathing. Alex felt like the spirit of life that had left his body entirely when he saw her collapse, had now returned. At that moment, he didn't even realize that he was hugging her so tightly. Easy, Alex, or you'll end up squeezing her to death, Zeke said, nonchalantly, as he stood up causing Alex to finally realize what he was doing. It looks like your little lamb is not as fragile as you think, Alex, Zeke added before he moved towards him and patted his shoulder. Because Alex was holding Abby in his arms, Zeke swiftly managed to take the dungeon's key from him. I'll let Mira go. You can punish her all you want, but I can't just allow you to claim her life. 
That is not your decision to make, Zeke, replied Alex as he stood up, carrying Abby in his arms as carefully as if he was holding a newborn baby. Abigail is alive, Alex. No need to spill any more blood. Besides, if you execute Mira because of her, I'm afraid you'll just be digging Abigail's grave. Or, were you thinking of taking all her freedom and chaining her right next to you forever to be able to keep her safe? Alexander didn't respond to Zeke's words. The murderous look in his eyes, that started to waver upon the sight of his little lamb, slowly faded and returned to its usual coldness as he disappeared from Zeke's sight. Somewhere in Old City, Country V's capital. It was a little dark when Abby opened her eyes again. Her entire body ached and she hadn't even moved yet. Her eyes slowly adjusted and wandered around as her brows knitted together. Where was she? This wasn't her room. This was not her room at Alex's house either. Abby moved and immediately winched because of the pain from the cut on her left leg. As she continued to move, a deep voice made her pause. You're awake, the voice said and Abby's head immediately turned towards her right, to the source of the voice. Alex, you're back, her voice was barely a whisper. She realized that her throat hurt a little when she spoke. However, she couldn't think about the pain upon seeing Alex being right there next to her bed. She felt like it had been a really long time since she last saw him. She missed him so much that she wanted to cry. Abby immediately reached out and held his arm as she attempted to rise so she could hug him when Alex gently pinned her down. Stay put. You're injured. His voice sounded hoarse as if he was struggling to keep his voice gentle. Injured. How come? She said as she winced. Her voice was not coming out normally. She felt as though she hadn't drunk any water for many days. Water, please, she asked. Alex poured water into the glass and then looked at her. Abby was waiting for him to help her up, but to her surprise, the man didn't. Instead, he drank it himself. Abby's lips parted as she blinked at him in confusion. However, before she could complain, the man bent down and his lips crashed on hers. Her lips were already parted so he easily pried it open. The next second, Abby felt the liquid flow from his mouth to hers, and then down her throat. Abby felt like all her sleeping cells had been jolted awake by a lightning bolt. W. What did he just do? Her face turned as red as a cooked lobster as she looked at him, dumbstruck. But the man simply drank more water from the glass and kissed her again, making her drink the water from his mouth. Abigail's face was burning red. Her throat was finally better now after the third time Alex made her drink water from his mouth. He didn't even give her a chance to decline him. Want more? he asked, causing Abby to frantically shake her head. I. I'm fine now, Alex, she told him as she covered her lips with the back of her hand. I. I can drink on my own. Why you don't have to do that, she stammered. For Abby. What he did was extremely embarrassing and she felt like she'd end up being choked to death instead if he continued doing that. She thought that this man had no idea how his actions were affecting her. No matter how much she told herself that he was only doing that to help her, her heart couldn't take it. She was afraid she might totally forget to breathe or swallow the water if he did that again. What? You don't like my method? he asked. His fingers were already on her chin and his thumb wiping her wet lips. T that's not it. So you like it, but you're embarrassed? He bent down and stared deep into her eyes. Answer me, Abigail, his sweet breath touched her face. Before Abby knew it she said the word, yes. This man was too much. How could she say no when he was asking her this way? Good girl, he replied. At that moment, 
Abby finally realized that there seemed to be something off with this man since she woke up. He didn't smirk or smile mischievously at her. She noticed that he always did that even in serious moments but now, he actually didn't smirk or smile even once. Also, why did his eyes look like they were colder than ever yet felt warmer than before? Did something happen during the seven days that he was away? Suddenly, the memories finally started flooding into Abby's head. That's right, she and Kelly had attended the ball and then, she was. Abby's eyes slowly widened in both shock and horror the moment she remembered everything that happened to her. The darkness, the pain, the fear, the seemingly endless dungeon and the music, everything appeared in her head so clearly. It was as if she just remembered a horrifying nightmare. Her hands suddenly clenched, clutching tightly onto Alex's shirt and her reddened face instantly became pale. The next moment, her arms flew towards Alex's neck as they wrapped around him and pulled him down towards her. Abby hugged him as tight as she could as if she wanted to fix him permanently into her embrace. Hey Alex. I am not dreaming, right? she asked. Her voice filled with doubt and fear. You're not, Abigail. Alex assured her. I, that, that dungeon. I was. Emin, you made it out of that place on your own, he replied. His hand moved towards her head and he gently patted her hair in comfort. You're amazing, Abigail. With just those words, Abby's trembling lips and hand calmed down. The panic in her heart started to subside and her grip on him loosened up. Alex moved and looked at her dumbstruck face. Everybody said no one had ever escaped from that place since it was built, but my naive little lamb actually made it out. I think I can't underestimate you from now on. He pinched her cheek as Abby looked at him in disbelief. Abby couldn't speak for a while as she simply stared at him until Alex pulled himself up and sat up. You have to eat now, he said and without waiting for her response, the man carried her carefully in his arms. I only have one servant here and she's pretty old. She can't even climb the stairs anymore so I have no choice but take you downstairs, he added as he walked out of the room. Abby now noticed that this room where she was seemed even older than her room in her house. Wait, where were they? Were they inside that palace? Ah. Oh. Alex, where's Kelly? Abby finally remembered her friend. Don't worry about her. Kai's looking after her. She's back at the hotel where you two were staying at. Does she know that I am here? Yes. I told her I am taking you with me. You will stay with me until you get a little better and then we will go back home. She and Kai will fly back tonight. She's all right, right? Yes. Nothing happened to her. As Alex carried her down the stairs, Abby realized that they were not inside a palace. It seemed like they were inside a much older but a little smaller version of his house back home. The house was not as extravagant as the mansion. Instead of being made of marble, it was made from bricks, like the old castles, but it was still well in a very good condition, considering it looked about centuries old. Where are we? My house. Abby was surprised. So he had a house here, too. Could it be that his family was here? But the house was even quieter than his house back home. Abby wanted to ask more questions but for some reason, she felt Alex's mood was a little strange. He was answering her questions without beating around the bush, almost as if he was answering an interview, straightforwardly. He wasn't like this before. He used to tease her and smirk at her like a devil but now, he seemed to be suppressing something. She even noticed that he seemed to have to make an effort to control his voice. What's going on? Was this just her imagination? Careful with your leg, he told her as he put her down and helped her to her seat. 
The table in the dining room looked even more ancient than anything she had ever seen. Eat, he ordered, as he scooped a spoonful of soup to feed her. I can do it my dash. Aubie couldn't continue what she wanted to say because of the sudden chill she felt from him. She finally realized what was wrong. This man was extremely angry and he had been trying very hard to suppress it or hide it from her. It was as if he was quietly raging. Gazing at his serious face, Aubie obediently opened her mouth and ate the food. The quietly sat there, with Alexander feeding her non-stop while Aubie just obediently ate every morsel of food he gave her. Well, she was starving and needed to get back her strength so she had no complaints. Once Aubie's somewhat awkward, serious and quiet yet fulfilling meal was over, she gazed intensely at the man before she asked. Alex, are you angry? Alexander, who was pouring her a glass of water, paused as soon as he heard her. His gaze fell on her and then his unnatural calmness finally swayed. He put the glass of water before her, not averting his eyes off her. So what if I am? What are you going to do about it? Ha! Huh? Abigail. For the first time that day, his lips curved up. Aubie's lips opened but no words came out from it. She moved and was about to stand up when Alex's cold and stern voice halted her. Don't you dare move. You hurt your leg. His voice was as cold as steel. He wasn't suppressing his anger anymore now that Aubie had found out about it. His eyes were filled with cold fury. Are you angry with me? Aubie forced herself to ask. She couldn't help but feel intimidated by the immense coldness in his eyes. At that moment, Aubie saw his jaws clench and then he closed his eyes. I don't know, he muttered. Even though you're here, alive and kicking, I'm still furious. He ran his fingers through his hair as he threw back his head and stared up at the ceiling. I thought I would calm down once you woke up but... I guess... I am really not capable of forgiving after all. Killing that conniving princess might be the only way for me to calm down, he mumbled, causing Abby to stand suddenly. Alexander moved like a lightning towards her and held her waist. You, are you trying to fuel my rage? I told you to stay put. His calm facade finally broke apart completely. His voice was loud and unrestrained but Abby wasn't concerned about his rage even though she felt chills run down her spine. P. Princess. W. Why would you want to kill her? She stammered. What princess? Was he talking about the princess in this country? Because she was the one who kidnapped you and threw you in that dungeon, Abigail, he replied as his eyes burned with anger. Why, why did she do that to me? Again, Aubie didn't even flinch at the dangerous look in his eyes. Because she wants you dead. Aubie felt like her throat ran dry again. Why did that princess kidnap her? Why? Did I do something wrong? Alexander's eyes scorched from under his beautiful lashes. You did nothing wrong, Abigail. You just happened to be my. I just happened to be your, she pressed, trying her very best to ignore the chill she was feeling as she stared at him. Alex pressed his lips together into a hard line. And then, all of a sudden, he bent down and carried her startling Aubie by this sudden movement. You need to rest now, was the explanation he gave for his actions and Aubie understood that this man was at it again, hiding things from her as usual. She really, really wanted to know why a princess would do that to her but she suppressed herself from asking further. Alex was still angry. She was afraid that she would aggravate him further if she pressed to know the truth right now. Maybe, she would ask him again once his mood was better. They were both quiet again as they climbed up two flights of stairs. Once they reached the third floor, she realized that there was only one room on the floor. Alex, where's your room? 
she asked, breaking the silence. This is my room, Abigail, he replied as he put her down on the bed. No wonder this room smelled like him, was the thought that came to her head. She looked around and realized how empty it was. There were no decorations or even books inside. It was a very plain and spacious room with almost nothing inside it. As she looked around, she couldn't explain why, but she suddenly felt cold. She realized what a cold, lonely, and empty vibe this room gave off. You don't like it here. Alex's voice rang and her head snapped towards him. She quickly shrugged off the feeling and thoughts in her head and told herself that it was probably because Alex had moved out from this place a long time ago and had abandoned this room for a long time. No, I like it here. It's just that. I'm surprised you let me inside your room. You never showed me your room back home, she accompanied her words with a quick smile. However, Alex simply paused for a long while before he pinned her down on the bed, ignoring her words again. Sleep, he told her as he pulled the blanket up to her neck, almost as if he wanted to cover her whole. Abby pursed her lips. She thought that she would at least get an answer to why he hadn't let her see his room back home but it looked like that was not a topic she could bring up at this time either. Was this man really not going to reveal anything to her at all? Sleep. Don't even think about going out because the door will be locked. I'll be back as soon as possible, he added and Abby saw his eyes glisten with something extremely dangerous as he glanced through the doorway. Abby immediately thought about what he said a while ago. Was he going to that Princess Anne? Suddenly, Abby's arms wrapped around Alex's waist before he could turn to leave. Alex, please don't leave. Please stay with me, she begged. Was she really not able to calm him down at all? Did he really need to go and Kay, harm someone for him to calm down? Abigail, I can't stay with you like this, Alex's cold voice echoed inside the room but Abigail was persistent. I will try my best to calm you down. There must be some way. Just, please don't go. No, you have to rest. The glacier wasn't giving in at all. I will at least let her live. Maybe it's just because her punishment wasn't fitting enough. I might calm down once I torture her enough with my own two hands. Alex was really burning with rage. This man in front of her at the moment wasn't the same Alex who easily switched moods in a blink of an eye. She could see the furnace of rage he couldn't contain. Abby slightly shivered but she still didn't let go. Now, let go, Abigail. She shook her head on his chest. You don't need to do something like that anymore, Alex. I am fine, look. It's only a small cut on my leg but other than that, I am fine. I'm sure she already regrets what she did, so there's no need for you to do anything. Abigail, could it be that you're stopping me because you don't want me to do something horrible? He squinted his eyes as he glared down at her. He held her face as he rubbed her cheek with his thumb. Listen, little lamb, I have already told you before. I'm not an angel like you. I am horrible creature to begin with, doing horrible things are just. No. You're not horrible, Alex. Abby cut through his words. Her eyes didn't waver as she gazed up at him. What she said made Alex stare down at her in disbelief. And then, finally, that devilish smile curved on his face. He slowly shook his head, looking up the ceiling and made an angry noise under his breath before he looked at her again. If this little lamb only knew, she wouldn't be so quick to deny his words. He knew what he was and nothing would ever change that, but this silly girl, this silly girl was too naive for her own good. Alex's expression now seemed to be torn or pained or wary. She didn't know if what she was seeing was the real emotion he was feeling. 
He was almost impossible to read even at times like this when he was struggling to control himself. Abigail, if you knew who I really am, you would run away from me, screaming in fear, he told her, his voice now serious, as if he was sure of it. No, you're wrong, Alex. I wouldn't. Abby didn't even hesitate to tell him that. She didn't know anything about him. She didn't know what he did or what he was capable of doing. She believed him when he told her that he was dangerous but she didn't feel that she was in danger when she was with him. Sure, she felt scared sometimes, but that was only because his aura was very overpowering and something that she was not used to. She knew deep in her heart that he would never hurt her so knowing that, whatever happened and no matter who he was, she would never run away from him, screaming in fear. In fact, she was certain that she would be screaming in pain instead when it's finally time for her to walk away from him. Please, don't go. I just don't want you to leave me again. I am finally with you again after one long week, so please, don't leave me alone here. Abby's grip on him tightened. She didn't even notice that her forehead was pressing against his belt. Can't you just stay with me? I can help you calm down. And how would you do that? Ha! Huh? Abigail. Abby actually had no idea at all. She really didn't know how to coax an angry Alex to calm down. This was the first time she had witnessed him being this angry. She heard him take a deep breath and when he touched her hand, Abby began to panic, thinking that the man was going to pull her hand away and leave. Without thinking about it, she wrapped her arms suddenly around his neck and pulled his face down closer to hers and smacked her lips onto his. She kissed him with everything she had, putting in the new lessons she had learned into effect as she poured all her emotion into it. I missed you. I need you. Stay. Don't go. Please, were the words she wanted to convey to him through her kiss so she kissed him passionately. Alex froze. He was caught completely off guard, never expecting his little lamb to do something like this. His lips didn't move because he was in a daze but after a second, he felt her breath enter his body and he felt its warmth run through his body, as if it was expelling all the cold, dark anger from his bones. He felt as if her kiss brought the sun back into his dark universe and all thoughts of revenge and torture slowly dispersed like dark clouds evaporating into nothingness. After a few more moments, his lips finally moved and he kissed her back with more force than he had done before, reveling in the taste of her lips. He kissed her like a dying man drinking from the fountain of life. He was so lost in their kiss that he didn't notice the tears rolling down Abby's cheeks until they landed on his face. What? Why was she crying? Abby also didn't realize that tears had started falling down her face. She didn't know why she was crying either. Maybe the traumatic experience she just recently escaped from had finally caught up to her. Maybe she just suddenly realized that she was lucky to have gotten out of that place alive and that she was very lucky to be there, at that moment, kissing this man who she thought she would never see again. Her tears kept flowing, non-stop, like a never-ending river and she couldn't stop it. When she couldn't breathe from crying and kissing him at the same time, Abby pulled away from Alex and looked up at him with her tear-stained face. Her face was just so expressive that he could read all the different emotions that ran through them. Alex cupped her cheeks with both hands and he wiped away all her tears. Shoo, don't cry, Abigail, he said softly and before she knew it, he had bent down and placed his lips on her closed eyes, kissing away her tears. When he moved away, Abby looked up at him with all the seriousness she could muster and she said, I didn't know if I would ever see you again and I. Can I ask you to stay here with me, please? I just want you to hold me so that I know this isn't a dream. Please, Alex. Before Alex knew it, he was already on the bed, lying next to her. 
Her arm was wrapped around his waist as she lay on her side, with her injured leg on top of him, pinning him down well and truly. Alex stared up the ceiling as he thought about what just happened. This little lamb actually tamed him just like that. She even made him lie next to her like this, almost as if she had turned him into her obedient pillow. What was going on? When did he become this considerate towards this little fruit? When did a kiss start to affect him like this? Alex thought hard about this. He looked back on his reactions since the moment he found out that she was missing and he surprised himself. For the first time, he experienced how it felt to become desperate, to not be in control, almost going insane from his rage. He experienced the kind of emotions he thought he never possessed. All of these feelings were completely new to him. A quiet sigh left Alex's lips as he lifted his arm and placed it on his forehead. He didn't think that these emotions were awakened by his little lamb but that she had somehow placed them inside him without him knowing it. The worst thing was that these new emotions were dangerous to have, at least for someone like him. Alex. Abby's voice pulled him back from his thoughts and the man immediately turned to look at her. His brows abruptly nodded in displeasure. You're still awake. I told you to. But I just woke up not long ago, she cut through his words, pursing her lips. I will sleep once my body needs it. Besides, I'm afraid you'll ditch me once I close my eyes. I won't leave you, Abigail. He enunciated every word. His mood shifted again. His gentle voice and expressions disappeared and the usual moody Alex returned. Were you the one playing that flute? She asked when he looked away from her and stared up at the ceiling again. No, it wasn't me, he answered. For some reason, there was an undercurrent in his voice that she couldn't comprehend. I see. If not for that person, I think I never would have found my way out. How did you manage to evade those traps? He cut her off this time. He sounded like he didn't like what she just said. I used stones. I threw them in the dark and listened to the sound they made to avoid the traps. And then. I heard that melodic sound. I followed it and that's how I accidentally found the secret passage. You heard the sound while you were still inside the dungeon. Alex was surprised. The part of the dungeon where the traps were laid down was far away from that exit where Zeke played the flute. How could she hear it? Mm. My hearing is my superpower. I can hear things that most people can't. She smiled at him, like she was boasting about her gifted talent. Hmm, if it wasn't you, then who was it? Ah, oh, could that person be my guardian angel? Alexander suddenly emitted an ice-cold aura before he glared at her. He cupped her face and moved his face close to hers. He's not your guardian angel, little fruit, he said, sternly and unhappily. Instead of just playing that damned flute, he should have just entered from that exit and opened that damned secret door to save you. That punk, I really want to skin him alive. Alex gritted his teeth. He couldn't understand why Zeke didn't just go in to get her instead of just playing the flute but then again, Alex couldn't deny the fact that Zeke still saved Abigail, not him, so he really couldn't complain when he himself could do nothing. But what he did confused Alex. Alex knew what Zeke wanted but he contradicted everything with his actions and did the complete opposite of what Alex expected him to do. Now sleep, little fruit. Alex put his palm over her eyes to force her to close them. However, once again, he didn't expect what the little lamb did next. She stretched out her hand and touched his face. Alex, thank you for being there when I came out. She smiled sincerely at him and Alex slowly removed his hand from her eyes. You knew I was there? he asked, surprised. Mm. I heard you call out my name. I knew you were looking for me. 
I thought that you were waiting for me outside the entire time so I didn't give up until the end. Her face beamed even brighter but Alex's face seemed to have stiffened. Abigail, you know that this happened to you because of me, right? he said. His voice became cold again. Since he found her, Alex thought that this little lamb's attitude towards him would change from now on. He even thought that she would be traumatized and would finally quit once she woke up. But she didn't. She was right there, lying on his bed, smiling at him and thanking him. I know. But you were also the reason I got out of there. I didn't give up because I wanted to prove to you that I could handle the hell you spoke of, she said seriously. Then in the next second, she looked up at him with her big round eyes, blinked a few times before she asked, didn't I do well, in a tone akin to a little child showing their parents that they could ride a bike without training wheels for the first time and looking for their praise. Alex looked at her expression with incredulous eyes. Was this little fruit actually asking to be given a pat on the head for a job well done? Before he could say or do anything, she spoke again. But what I still don't know is why. Was it because, they don't like me? Are you this country's crown prince? she asked, her big eyes looking expectant as she waited for his reply. Her questions and expressions made Alex smirk. What makes you think that I am? Well, for you to be able to punish that princess, like you said you did, you would have to be someone as powerful as the royal family, if not more, right? But why did they do that? Was it because they don't want you to marry a commoner like me? Abby explained her thoughts to him. She had read a few fictional romance novels about the love between royals and commoners and how the royal family would always try and break them up because the commoner wasn't a suitable match. However, her theory was laughed at by Alex. Was she wrong? Crown Prince, huh? He muttered once he stopped laughing. He looked at Abby with a playful smirk as he caressed her cheek with his thumb. Rest assured, little lamb. I'm not a crown prince or part of the royal family. And I am not planning to marry anyone, Abigail. But you would eventually marry in the future, right? Alex's hand on her face paused and for some reason, Abby felt like all the lights in his eyes disappeared for a moment as he murmured. The future. I don't have a future, Abigail. He said and Abby's eyes widened. W. What do you mean you don't have a future? Abby suddenly panicked. She felt her heartbeat turn chaotic as she moved her body to rise. However, Alex was quick to pin her down again. Abigail, how many times do I have to tell you to stay put? He scolded her, but Abby was unfazed. It's because you're saying such things again. She suddenly became emotional, and Alex had no idea why. Saying you don't have a future, only people who are dying say things like that. Are you dying? Alex was speechless. Why did this girl keep getting riled up by unnecessary things like this? Little lamb, do I look like I'm dying? He asked as he pointed to his own face. His expression was filled with disbelief. No, but... Abby replied after staring at him for a long while. What I'm saying is. I don't have that kind of future, Abigail. Marrying someone, that's absolutely not for me, he told her. He sounded like he had made up his mind a long time ago and that there was no changing his mind about it. Somehow, even though Abby's expression finally changed and she had at least calmed down, for some reason, his last sentence pierced like a needle through her heart. W.I. Why don't you want to marry? Is it because you don't want children? Or is it because you just can't see yourself settling down with one person? Or is it because you don't believe in marriage? Abby stared deeply into his eyes as she spoke. As for me I. That is definitely something I would like to experience. 
I want to wear that white wedding dress, walk down the aisle towards my soon-to-be husband and say those vows. To dance and celebrate and to live happily ever after with them, she told him and Alex's lips parted. He was at a loss for words. The truth was that getting married was supposed to be one of Abby's wishes. This was something that had been on her mind for a long while now. What normal girl out there didn't dream of their wedding day? But she knew that that was too much for her to ask. She knew there was no way Alex or anyone else would agree to it, so she crossed it off her list. Abby felt a little tensed as the silence dragged on. Maybe she shouldn't have brought this topic up. She knew she sounded crazy. She had only been with this man a little more than two weeks and bringing something up like this would surely scare any sane man away. But she was only telling the truth. Getting married was something every woman dreamed of and this was next in line below her ultimate wish, but she knew that was simply impossible. After a minute or so, as expected, Alex chuckled noisily as he shook his head. He probably thought that she had gone mad. However, a second later, his eyes turned serious. Tell me, Abigail, why are you saying all this? he asked. His eyes were brooding and Obby's heart skipped a beat when she realized that Alex might be starting to become suspicious. Um, well, this is, because you said you'd never marry. How can you say that when you haven't even tried it? What if we get married and be a married couple for the rest of the month? Maybe after our trial marriage, you might change your mind and decide to marry someone for real and have a family in the future. Abby bit her lips. She didn't know what she was saying anymore. She just didn't want him to suspect anything. But her last sentence was like a sharp knife being pierced through her heart. The thought of him marrying someone else someday hurt her, so damn bad. Alex threw back his head as he let out a throaty chuckle before he looked at her again, shaking his head. Little lamb, do you have any idea how ridiculous you are becoming by the day? I can't believe you are actually thinking about something like this. I don't see anything wrong with wanting to experience it, she defended herself. Abigail, you'll get married properly one day. There's no need for you to rush like this. If I do get married one day, you're saying that my groom won't be you? Yes. It will never be me, Abigail, he answered and Abby almost felt like she was being strangled. That was right, she almost forgot what Alex told her the first time they met. That he didn't do love and that was exactly the reason why she chose him. I told you, that's not for someone like me. Is it because you don't want to settle down or commit to anyone? Abby saw Alex's eyes glimmered with something she couldn't comprehend. Her question seemed to have stirred something inside him. Yes, you're right, Abigail. It's simply because I don't want to settle down or commit to anyone, he said as the corner of his lips curved up. However, to Abby, his words were unconvincing. He was lying and for the first time since she had known him, she was certain about the things she saw in his eyes. She could tell that there were untold reasons why, and she wondered what it could be. Whatever it was must be something big because not wanting to get married was a big decision in itself. So, are you saying you will say no even if I ask you to marry me? She knew that marriage wasn't something to be taken lightly but... It would be nice if she could marry this man before her time was up. Deep within her, she knew that he would be the only man she would ever want to be with, even if he didn't love her. But after seeing Alex's disbelieving reaction, Abby's little hope slowly died down. Maybe it was better this way. She knew that her wish was just impossible and she knew she shouldn't be more selfish than she was already being. Even if Alex was the man she wanted to marry, she couldn't possibly force him to marry her just to leave him afterward. She could never do that. She thought that Alex deserved to marry someone he loved in a proper and serious way one day, not the trial marriage she was talking about. 
At that moment, before Alex could even say a thing, Abby suddenly grinned. Then suddenly, she cupped her cheeks with her hands as she blinked at him with puppy dog eyes and pouted like a spoiled little girl. Are you saying that you can resist this cute little creature's charm? She asked in a cute and playful way, referring to herself. She then turned up the cuteness level by 200% as she rubbed her head on his chest like a little kitten and looked up at him. How about now? Will you still reject me if I asked you to marry me? She asked playfully and then she cleared her throat. Ahem. Alexander Cheen, will you marry me, your little fruity lamb? She said these words in a way that clearly told him she was just playing around. She was trying to lift the mood to make him think that her words about a trial marriage were nothing serious. Fortunately, what she did seemed to have immediately worked. Alex fell in a daze before he let his body fall back on the bed as if he was finally done with her quirks. TCH I can't believe that a little fruit is actually trying to drive me insane. The man bit his lips as he shook his head as if he couldn't believe that he just gave up the championship game midway because some little fruit annoyingly fell and hit his head. And what did she just say? Little fruity lamb. For the first time, the man looked frustrated as he laughed and shake his head. But somehow, at that moment, Abby thought that he looked a little, cute. She never thought that this oh-so-cold and scary Alexander Cheen was capable of reacting like this. Wanting to see that expression again, Abby was about to mischievously tease him with those words again when to her surprise, Alex pinned her down again using his strong arms. Stop messing around now and sleep. His tone became serious again so Abby could only pout and stay put. Okay. But you have to promise me not to leave, okay? I told you, I will not leave. Abby closed her eyes and after some time, the little lamb fell asleep. Alex turned and looked at her face. His cold eyes immediately softened as he lightly touched her cheeks and then her lips. Marriage, uh huh? He mumbled and then his eyes grew dim before he looked away and covered his eyes with the back of his hand. He couldn't believe that he just imagined her in a white wedding dress and he actually felt like he wanted to see it in reality. Meanwhile at the Grand Palace. In a secluded prison at the topmost part of the Northern Tower, Princess Mira was gripping the metal bars as she looked at her brother, Ezekiel. That prison wasn't as gruesome as the underground dungeon but it was still a prison cell. This place was where members of the royal family would be held if they committed an unforgivable crime. According to the kingdom's history, a queen who once committed treason against the king at the time was imprisoned in this place for many years until she died. This place was not a nice place at all and that was why everyone was shocked and Ezekiel put his sister there. Brother, how could you be this cruel to me? That girl is alive. I didn't kill her. And yet, you're locking me up in this horrid place. Mira, you should be grateful. You know what you did was unforgivable. If Alex had his way, your head would be dangling outside for the crows to feast out of. This is the only way. If he thinks that I didn't punish you enough, he will come after you. I have to do this to save your life so shut your mouth and bear the consequences of your actions. You didn't use your brain so you have to pay for your own stupidity, he said coldly before he turned away. The king and queen as well as the other princesses were present to send Mira off because they would never see her again, unless Ezekiel pardoned her. Before Ezekiel left through the door, he halted and spoke one last time. This will serve as an example for everyone. If you want to mess with Alex, get ready for the consequences. What I'm saying is. If you don't want bloodshed, don't even think about taking that girl's life. Leave this matter to me so don't ever do anything like this again because if there is a next time, I'm not going to save anyone from his wrath. 
Abby and Alex boarded a private jet to head back home so Abby enjoyed an even more beautiful view of Country V. The sun was still high in the sky when they landed. When they reached Alex's mansion, Abby was surprised to see that Kelly was already there, waiting for her with Kai. The two embraced each other the moment Abby got out of the car. Kelly had been worried about her best friend but it seemed like Alex was quite trustworthy. Her dearest Abby looked really revitalized. In fact, her complexion was better than before they went to Country V, even though she was still injured. Um. Alex, can I take Kelly to my room? Abby whispered to Alex and fortunately, the man didn't hesitate to agree. Well, Kelly was already there so there was no point trying to hide anything from her anymore. As expected, Kelly's eyes were wide as saucers once they stepped foot inside. However, the main reason why Abby wanted to speak with Kelly was to ask her about the things that happened while she was missing. The two headed to the elevator as Kelly supported Abby as she walked. Little did Abby know that Kelly was also there to ask her what happened to her. Okay, I'll speak first. Kelly started. Honestly, I don't quite know what happened. I mean, it was so chaotic while we were looking for you. You may not believe me, Abby, but the entire force of Country V in that city moved just to find you. It was almost as if the king was the one that was kidnapped. Kelly's eyes were wide with awe as she recounted the story. Tell me, just who is Alexander Cheen? That man was also very scary at the time. He looked like a demon who was ready to burn the entire palace if you had not been found. Abby was surprised. What? An entire government force in the city looked for her. Abby couldn't believe it. Kelly, are you sure? Maybe, those people who looked for me were just Alex's men, Abby reasoned out. Alex told her that he wasn't a royal so there was no way he could mobilize this city's force. Abigail. When have I ever lied to you? I saw it with my own two eyes, okay? All the royal guards also searched for you, she argued. I'm sorry, Kelly. I didn't mean it that way. It's just that I am also confused because Alex told me that he wasn't royalty, Abby confessed and Kelly pressed her temples. Now that was a shock. Kelly had been thinking that he was the mysterious crown prince, but if he was not, then who the hell was he to mobilize this country's force just to look for his woman? Even the pretty prince was being ordered around by him like he was his personal knight. Kelly was getting a headache. Kelly. I'm sorry for the trouble. Alex said that the one who kidnapped me was one of the princesses. I still don't know the reason why she would do that to me. Alex said that I was down there because of him so I can only think that maybe she wanted to be Alex's lover so she needed to get rid of me first. Alex told me that it was better if I didn't know, that it was better for me not to know anything about him. Abby looked down. But. I will try to ask him again in the future. Kelly was in disbelief but Abby smiled, looking willful so Kelly could only sigh. She couldn't get anything out from that damned prince so she already predicted that Abby wouldn't know anything either. That night proved that Alexander Cheen might be someone even greater than she could imagine. She saw how the soldiers and even the royal guards obeyed his every word even though he was clearly not the king. Could it be that he was actually the real king of that country and that the Rain family were just his stand-ins? She had thought hard about this possibility but Abby just mentioned that he said he wasn't royalty at all. However, she couldn't logically think of any other reason why he seemed to have more power than the royal family. There were too many questions and they had none of the answers. The only thing she was sure of was that Alexander Cheen might be a shady creature, the shadiest man she had ever known. Okay, I understand but... Abby, are you sure about this? I mean, I just can't stop worrying about you. You know that you might not be safe if you stay, 
right? Just because you have the title of being his girlfriend, people have started trying to hurt you. What if that car that nearly got you last week also had something to do with your boyfriend? Abby's eyes slightly widened before she shook her head. That, that was just an accident, she said, but then she also remembered the stalker that Alex had beaten the other day. However, she just couldn't believe it. Why would they come after her? What would they get from her? The cliché plot she always read in novels was that the enemy was supposed to kidnap her and use that against Alex. But they didn't do that. Why did it feel like they wanted her dead instead without Alex knowing? She asked herself as she shuddered when she remembered the murderous intent of that stalker. However, Abby was not going to crumble in fear. Don't worry, Kelly. Alex will protect me, she said firmly. Even if her life was in danger, she knew that Alex would protect her, no matter what. Sigh, okay, fine, but please be careful, okay? You can't afford to get hurt again. You're lucky that Alex didn't bring you to the hospital and just called a doctor to see you since you only passed out due to exhaustion. Mm. I will be very careful. It was almost sunset when Abby sent Kelly off because Kelly's parents called her to come over to their house. Once Abby returned inside the house, she walked towards Alex, who was sitting by the fireplace. She sat right next to him and leaned her head on his shoulder. Alex, you ended up not fulfilling any wishes of mine for eleven days, she told him when suddenly, he gently pulled her head down and made her lie down on him, using his lap as her pillow. Abby smiled and she gladly positioned herself as she looked up at him. The man stared down into her eyes. Eleven requests aren't that hard to fulfill. What are your requests? Tell me and we can start but I will be choosing which request I will fulfill first because you are still injured. Who knows, you might ask me to help you fish for tuna in the Pacific Ocean, he sternly told her with a straight face and Abby's mouth parted before she burst out and chuckled. Fishing for tuna. That sounds fun. She grinned and it was Alex's turn to be speechless. At that moment, Abby immediately took advantage of his silence and she cupped her hands and blinked cutely at him, wanting to tease him again. Alex, will you marry me? She suddenly added and the already speechless man seemed to have completely lost his tongue. He simply stared at her in disbelief before he bit his lips and pinched the skin between his brows. Abby felt like smiling at seeing his reaction. She really found this cold glacier a little cute when he was like this. However, the feast didn't last for more than a few seconds because the man suddenly pinched her cheeks. Little fruit, stop messing around or I will not fulfill any of your wishes today, he threatened and Abby could only purse her lips and obey. Okay, okay. I'll tell you now. Abigail was silent for a while. She hadn't scanned her wish list for days now but they were still clear in her memory. She saw her list as if it was right in front of her with only three ticks next to the three items that had been fulfilled. So now that Alex was going to fulfill eleven of those as he promised, she was very excited. The excitement in her heart was overflowing that she totally forgot about the fact that she was injured. Okay, number one she said as she gestured number one with her pinky finger. I want to play laser tag with you. Alex's lips parted again in disbelief. Laser tag. What the hell? That was something that had never, ever, crossed his mind. Rejected, next, he replied and Abby pursed her lips. But then, the girl immediately switched gears. Ride a tandem bicycle with me. She said and Alex closed his eyes. Abigail, why are these things even on your list? What's wrong with them? They look quite fun and romantic and something that couples do. Rejected. Next. Abby was about to complain but she stopped herself. 
After all, she couldn't afford to make him grumpy because then he might renege on his offer. Let's watch the sunset and sunrise in one day. Approved. Next. Finally, one had been approved. Abby's face immediately brightened as soon as he agreed. Let's visit a haunted house, was the next request and Alex felt his mouth open and shut as he stared down at her. However, no words came out of it. It was obvious he was utterly speechless again by her requests. But then, after a short while, he agreed and Abby celebrated again. Nine more. Next. Let's go canoeing, she said excitedly and Alex's brows nodded together. Canoeing. Mm. That's something that could be fun, right? She exclaimed excitedly as she started to imagine a beautiful scenario of the two of them in a boat together, cuddling as they floated on top of a clear blue lake. Alex seemed to have thought about it for a while before he agreed again. That's three. Next. Let's go to the zoo, Alex. The zoo, ha. Huh? He repeated as he leaned his head on his palm. He definitely looked like a dad listening to his daughter's favorite things to do and places to visit. But then, he could only approve. At least, she was not asking for them to go and hunt a crocodile's eggs or anything like that. Approved. Next. I want a horseback ride on the beach. She grinned at him and Alex pressed his temples. Horseback ride, this girl. Alex had been expecting more feminine requests like requesting for a romantic and luxurious date, expensive jewelry set as a gift, some public displays of affection, and other things like that but this little lamb of his was really living up to her name. Her requests were so random. Visiting a haunted house, then a lake, then a zoo, and now on a beach. They were all outdoor activities and that was only four of her eleven requests. Was she doing this on purpose to make him eat his words that fulfilling eleven wishes in one go was easy? Approved, next. Time ticked by and only two more requests were finally left. Alex was rubbing his temple at that point. He didn't look too excited by any of these requests at all but a promise was a promise. Little lamb, he now said, instead of the usual, approved, and, next, that he was saying, almost as if he had become a parrot. He rubbed her cheeks with the back of his hand. All those nine requests are all for the outdoors. Don't you have a request that we could do indoors? We have plenty of time tonight. Abby blinked at him. Now that she thought about it, Alex was right. I have. Okay, my tenth request is, hmm, let's cuddle by the fire, she said and Alex raised his brow. For once, she requested something that interested him. Sure. And the last? Will you and why me? She spouted out again but she mumbled the word, Mary, so that it was almost unrecognizable. Teasing him sure was fun. She never imagined that she would be able to tease him like this. When she felt him stiffened again, she blinked up at him with innocent eyes and asked cheekily, What? What's with this reaction? I asked, Will you read to me? What did you think I said? Alex was sure he heard her ask him to marry her again, especially when she looked up at him with those big innocent eyes. This cheeky little lamb was really trying to drive him insane. Will I read to you? Hmm, what kind of book? He played along with her because he mentally noted that he would get her back for her cheekiness. Oh, hmm, we should choose which book we want the other to read us. For me, I'd like you to read me a chapter of one of my favorite books, she animatedly told him, her eyes even sparkling in excitement. How about you? What do you want me to read for you? She innocently asked him, looking expectant. However, the man seemed to have something naughty in his mind as his lips simply curved up. I don't know the title so. I'll just get the book and give it to you later, 
he answered, causing Abi to look at him with confusion. How come he didn't know the title? She was sure he would ask her to read his favorite book. Hmm, maybe that's not the case at all. Now she became extremely curious as to what that book was. Abi was about to ask, but she refrained since she thought that maybe the man might have wanted to surprise her. After dinner, the two went up to their room to shower and change. After Abi walked out of the shower, she headed into her walk-in wardrobe and took her new pajamas out. She placed it on the bed as she smiled widely to herself. She giggled in anticipation at Alex's reaction to it. On the day she and Kelly had gone shopping, she had seen this in one of the shops and she just couldn't resist buying it the moment she saw it. Abby came out of her room dressed in her new pajamas. She thought that Alex may already be waiting for her by the fireplace so she didn't bother knocking on the door to Alex's mysterious room. She descended the grand staircase and realized that the house felt really quiet as if there was no one inside the house but her and Alex. It seemed like Kai wasn't back yet either. She tiptoed towards the fireplace, thinking to surprise Alex but he was nowhere to be found. When she arrived by the fireplace, she was the one who was surprised instead and her lips formed a big O. It seemed that Alex had got everything ready. There was a very large, thick, soft, and warm-looking rug placed in front of the fire with rose petals sprinkled all over the white rug. She saw two small pillows on the rug as well as a warm-looking blanket which was folded up nicely at the foot of the rug. There were also many lit candles scattered on the floor by the fire and obby of them like scattered stars in the sky. On one side of the fireplace, there was a small table with an array of fruits and a couple of glasses of water. When Abby saw the soft and beautifully romantic setup, stars lit up in her eyes as she happily dove into the soft rug. Wow! It feels so soft, she exclaimed as she rolled on it like an animated little lamb. However, because the little lamb was in her own world, Enjoying the bliss of running her cheeks along the ultra-soft rug and pillows, she didn't notice the presence of the stern lion who had entered the room. Alex stopped midway into the room when he had a clear view of the rolling pin on the rug because he finally saw what she was wearing. It took him a little while to process his thoughts before the corner of his lips lifted in a sardonic smile. Stop rolling around, little lamb. Be careful of your leg. Abby immediately sat up, the hood of her pajamas falling over her head and covered half her face, as if she just heard a policeman, yelling at her to freeze. She forgot about her wound again. But could he blame her? This setting was so fluffy and warm, it was impossible not to enjoy it. When Abby turned in his direction, Alex couldn't even fin his voice for a few seconds. This was because he finally saw the full effect of her pajamas. What on earth are you wearing? He finally managed to say. My new pajamas, she said excitedly as she pushed the hood back from her head. I saw it when I was out shopping and had to buy it. Do you like it? She asked with wide eyes looking up at him with great expectation. He just gaped at her. This woman actually dared to buy a little lamb onesie. He was speechless. Well, since you kept calling me little lamb, I figured I'd grant your wish and dress up like one, Abby reasoned out when he said nothing, but then, she froze. It was because she finally realized that Alex was wearing a long, sexy, gray robe as he stood there, staring down at her. His hair was still a little damp and the effect was just so mesmerizing. For some reason, he gave out a strange vibe wearing those, a vibe that made Abby's heart race uncontrollably just by seeing him. Their outfits were like, well, worlds apart. Alex, why are you still wearing your robe? She asked as she blinked at him. Her question, of course, made the man smirk sexily. What's wrong with me wearing a robe? Would you rather prefer if I was naked? He asked and Abby's lips parted in disbelief. 
Okay, if that's what my little lamb wants, he teased and he began to untie his robe. Ah, no. Don't, she yelled as she pulled her hood over her eyes, causing Alex to chuckle. This little lamb, this should be the time for her to swallow as she gazes at me, dazed, watching and waiting for me to undress. He complained in his mind. Sigh, you can look again, little fruit, he said and Abby slowly pushed her hood back, thinking that the man was only teasing her just then. However, what she saw the moment she looked up again was his smooth, hard, chiseled abs. He had actually removed his robe. Abby blushed and she hid her face with her palms, but she did that only after a few seconds of being mesmerized by his perfectly sculpted upper body. Alex let out a throaty chuckle before he covered the goods with the robe again and sat next to her. Okay, shall we start, little Miss Storyteller? he asked. His face softened as his lips curved into a beautiful but mischievous smile and he ran the back of his hand slowly over her cheek. Abby immediately snapped out of her daze because of the warmth from his touch. She looked at him and when she saw that he donned his robe again, she quickly switched gears and looked at him like she was already very ready. This was it. One of her favorite wishes on her wish list was now going to happen. Having her boyfriend read a book to her was such a dreamy experience that she could only imagine before. But now, it was really going to happen so she couldn't stop her excitement from showing. Silently beaming in excitement, Abby then sat and positioned herself, facing him. Should I start? she asked and Alex tilted his head. Hmm. Nope, I'll go first, I think, he replied causing Abby to blink at him in surprise. She thought that he would do this unwillingly, but he actually volunteered to go first. This was a massive surprise. Seeing the shocked surprise on her face, Alex's lips curved up in an even more mischievous but sexy smile. He slowly moved and whispered in her ear. Well, I'm afraid something might happen if you read my choice of book to me so first. I better start us off. Abby frowned. Ha! Huh. Something might happen, she looked at him with intense curiosity. Hmm. I mean, you might end up exhausted after your turn that you wouldn't even get to hear my story anymore. Exhausted. Abby was now confused. Storytelling sure was exhausting if you did it for a whole day, but they agreed that they were just going to read a chapter each. Wait, could it be that he was going to ask her to act out the story? Or was he kidding again? Abby shook her head. She decided not to think about his tricky words and just agree with him. After all, she was truly excited to hear him read aloud to her with that sexy voice. Okay, sure. Here you go then. Abby grinned brightly and then, she moved and brought out a book titled, The Last Shooting Star. Abby opened the book and gave the book to him. You're going to read me the last chapter, Abby told him and Alex raised a brow. Why the last chapter? Shouldn't it be chapter one first? Do you like endings more than beginnings? He asked as he held the book in one hand before he looked at its cover. The cover wasn't as girly as he thought. And he was surprised to see that the book was from a male's point of view. Did she consider him when she chose this book? Looks like it. Hmm. I wouldn't say that. I like all the parts of the book, but to me, the ending part of that book is my favorite chapter. She smiled as she stared at the book like it was a priceless treasure. Alex realized that this book seemed to be something really special to her. He wondered what kind of story this was. When she told him that she was going to ask him to read a chapter from her favorite book, Alex thought that Abby was talking about that book she was reading the other day. But it turned out he was wrong. Could it be that this was a fantasy book? Okay, you will start here. She moved and pointed to a paragraph on the book before she looked at him. I want to lie on your lap again, 
Please, she pleaded, slowly blinking at him with those big round eyes of hers. Alex didn't say a word but he stretched out one leg silently. Aubie beamed and she immediately placed her head on his lap. Okay, I'm ready. Please start, she told him excitedly and Alex glanced down at her. He saw how bright her eyes were and he couldn't help but feel speechless again. Alex was always wondering why every simple little thing like this always excited her to this extent. To him, she was truly someone fascinatingly intriguing. Resting his hand, which was holding the book, on top of his folded knee, Alex finally focused his gaze on the page she pointed to a while ago. And then, he started reading. The moment I laid eyes on her, my life changed forever, he started. His voice as he read was somewhat different to Aubie's ear. It wasn't that cold but she couldn't call it warm either. He was reading out loud as if he was reading a newspaper article on the movements of the stock market, in an emotionless monologue. However, Aubie didn't mind. His voice had always been pleasing to her ears, like a deep and soothing baritone. This was more than she had expected. She was just so incredibly happy at that moment. I fell in love with her, so deeply in love, that I was tormented by it. I knew we wouldn't have long together but none of those things mattered to her. All she cared about was loving me. She didn't run away when she found out that I wasn't going to be in this world in the near future. That was the extent of her love. So, I gave in and I asked her to be my wife. As Alex continued reading, Aubie's smile slowly faded as she listened to that part of the chapter. She started to feel emotional and tears started to pool in the corners of her eyes, but she fought it hard and smiled again. Even though she had read this book many times, Aubie felt like this time around, it hit her so much harder. She truly loved the characters in this book, especially the male lead, Zero, a man who was a product of a certain experiment and was created to live a short life. The feeling of wanting to be with the person he loved, not thinking too much about the future and just doing the things that the heart wanted, despite the little time Zero had left, that was exactly how she felt. She didn't want to think about the future. She just wanted to just do whatever her heart wanted with the little time she had left, she just wanted to. At that moment, a realization dawned on Aubie and she suddenly clenched her fists tightly. Alex paused and looked at her. What? You don't like the way I read? He asked and Aubie jolted back to the present. She blinked away the tears, unclenched her fists, and looked up at him. When she saw the lines on his forehead, Aubie quickly cleared her throat. Ahem, actually, your voice seems a little different than usual. It was so nice that I was lost in thought listening to you. She grinned and Alex glanced at the book for a while before looking at her again. What do you mean, different? I mean, your voice sounds even more pleasing when you're reading. Now, please continue, she told him, still smiling, and Alex just stared at her for a moment before he finally returned his focus to the book. When I saw Hina walk down the aisle, my heart nearly stopped beating. She was so beautiful and in that moment, I couldn't wait to call her my wife, to be the man that she wanted me to be, to fill her life with so many amazing memories of our life together, no matter how short it might be. For some reason, Alex took a short pause. Abby looked up at him with questions in her eyes, but the man's expression remained the same. However, the look in his eyes visibly changed. For a moment, she saw his pupils dilated. Abby blinked in and frowned a little but before she could speak, Alex continued again. Just as my dearest Hina wished, at sunset at a secluded garden with just less than a hundred guests, our hearts and souls were merged into one. We became husband and wife. Alex paused again. This time, a little longer. Alex. Aubie called out softly and the man glanced down at her. 
Upon hearing Abi call his name, Alex seemed to have been pulled out from his deep thoughts. His gaze snapped towards Abi and he cleared his throat, almost as if he too was hiding something at that moment. I don't understand why these characters are doing this, he then told her in his normal tone and expression. Do you? he asked, his eyes seemed to be burning with something strange as he asked that. There was no way Abi could tell what that unfathomable gaze of his was saying so she could only think that it might be some intense interest. Mmm. I do. I think I do. If I try to put myself in the character's shoes, would also do the same, she answered honestly and certainly, causing Alex to crease his brows. Why would you do that? Alex's face was serious and his gaze became even deeper as he stared at her. His gaze was probing and Abby felt like he might have found her words a little suspicious. That thought scared Abby. She had thought about this possibility when she picked this book and particularly the chapter. She knew there was a risk that Alex might pick up on something but even then, she still chose this book. This book meant a lot to her and that was the reason why she put this activity on her wish list and that particular chapter especially had an important place in her heart. She wanted to hear it from Alex's mouth because she thought that even if her wish of getting married would never be fulfilled, listening to the story of Zero's and Hina's experiences from Alex's mouth would be enough for her. Alex didn't know how much Abby was struggling to control her emotions as she answered him. Because... If I only had a little time left, I would want to experience life to the fullest with the person I love most in the world. She managed to keep her cool and answered him normally. Wouldn't you? In fact, if you agree to marry me, I also will marry you no matter what, Abby replied before she suddenly looked at him with twinkling eyes as a huge grin formed on her face. Alex, will you mar? The man immediately looked like a vein would soon pop on his forehead as he cut her off. If you want me to finish this. Before Alex could even complete his sentence, Abby acted like she zipped her lips then threw away the key. Seeing that the man's expression changed back to normal, Abby secretly sighed in relief. That was good. It seemed that he didn't suspect a thing. As Alex continued reading, Abby slowly got better control of her emotions and she stayed still like a well-behaved child. She closed her eyes and her face now looked peaceful as she listened to him, imagining the story clearly in her head, imagining herself and Alex in place of the characters. The story became even more emotional as it went on. Abby never opened her eyes again as she let herself get lost in the words of the story and Alex's voice. As Alex continued reading, she imagined the scenes in her mind and Abby felt her heart start to clench from the pain. She felt what Hina was feeling at that moment and it was bittersweet. After we said our vows, we were pronounced as husband and wife. I kissed Hina softly in front of all our friends and family who bore witness to the moment I promised to give her my love and everything I have, in sickness and in health, and I'd never felt so good about anything. Alex trailed off. For the third time, he took a pause. He glanced at the girl on his lap and when he saw how peaceful her face was with her eyes closed, Alex didn't know why, but he placed his hand between Abby's neck and chest. Abby felt his hand and she too lifted hers and placed it on top of his without opening her eyes. It was then that Alex realized what he had done. He was surprised but he immediately returned his gaze towards the book and began reading. For some reason, he kind of wanted to know what would come next, which was again something surprising for him. He never cared about things like this before. It didn't even catch a tiny bit of his attention. And yet, here he was. Before he knew it, he actually truly wanted to read until the end to see what kind of words were waiting on the last page. Our first dance as man and wife was certainly a memorable one, but not for the reason I would have liked. At that time, my illness was triggered and I nearly collapsed on the ground. 
I was glad that my best man caught me in time. I saw the worry in my bride's eyes and in that moment, my heart felt like it had been stabbed a thousand times. The thought that I would be leaving her alone in this world surfaced again. Once again, Alex paused for a moment after that paragraph because he felt Abby's grip on his, tighten. He glanced at her face but the girl's eyes were still closed, giving him no clues to what she was thinking. He could see that she was acting a little strange, but knowing how innocent and pure this little lamb of his was, he thought that she might be feeling quite emotional and might even be feeling the pain of the characters. He knew that this little lamb of his was just that type of person. When I look back on that day, I don't think about our first dance. The first thing that comes to mind is the picture of my bride, dressed in her beautiful wedding dress with that beautiful smile on her face. At that moment, Alex looked like something finally dawned on him and his gaze suddenly snapped to Abby's face. There was a strange intensity in his eyes as he uttered the rest of the paragraph without averting his gaze away from her. That day was the most wonderful moment of my life. Finally, he read the very last sentence. Every time I look at her face now, I am reminded of that beautiful line I read from her favorite book saying. But before Alex could state the rest of the sentence, he paused because he suddenly felt Abby's hand on his cheek. Her eyes were already open and she was smiling as she caressed his cheek, her eyes glimmering with the tears that were threatening to fall. I now believe, by the way, that miracles can happen, asterisk, she continued the rest of the line as a tear fell from her eyes. Alex's eyes slowly widened when he saw her suddenly tearing up as she uttered those words in what he thought was the most emotional voice he had ever heard from her. He couldn't explain it but those words, that look in her eyes, that tear and her voice at that moment made him feel like something shattered inside him, almost as if an intense quake had just shaken his world. Abby on the other hand, froze the moment she realized what she was doing. She finally noticed the moisture in her eyes and the tear that was making its way down her cheek. Seeing Alex's widened eyes as he looked at her, Abby felt her heart jump and she quickly rubbed her hand across her cheek, wiping that lone tear away. Sorry. I don't often cry reading sad books but this still makes me tear up, no matter how many times I have read it, Abby tried her best to act normally making it look like she was like this just because of the story. It's beautiful, right? She did her best to show him a smile. But the man remained silent. His eyes never left her face. Abby's worry intensified when Alex didn't say a thing so she quickly helped herself up and faced him. Okay, it's my turn now. She stretched out her hand, asking for the book that she would read to him. However, Alex just closed the book he had just read and stared at its cover. So, did that zero die? He suddenly asked, causing Abby to blink at him, surprised. She didn't expect him to show any interest in it. It took her a while before she could give him an answer. Um, actually, I don't know. The author of the book didn't really confirm it. I guess she may have wanted us to fill in the blanks as we saw fit. But judging from that last line, maybe a miracle happened to him and they found a cure, she explained with a hopeful voice. He stared at her as he put the book away. Well, miracles always happen in fictional worlds, he mumbled and Abby looked down. Even though he was right and she knew that well, she still felt pained. If only a miracle would happen to her too. Tell me, why did you choose that book for me to read, was the next question that Alex asked and Abby immediately felt her throat run dry. She froze and was unable to look up. Did he suspect her now? No, that was impossible. Relax Abby, he might only be asking because he was truly curious. Don't worry, you can still deal with this. Fortunately, Abby managed to control herself and listen to her mind. 
She moved and S.C. ratcheted her head as she slowly looked up and met his probing gaze. Well. I. I wanted to. She was stammering. Because I kind of want to show you how wonderful this story was and how wonderful weddings are. She sped up as she glanced up at his face, apprehensively. She wanted to show him how wonderful Zero had felt to marry the person he chose to be with, and that even though life wasn't how they would have liked, they still made the decision to live it together, as husband and wife. Alex frowned at her but the next moment, he threw his head back and stared at the ceiling, speechless. Seeing his reaction, Abby took advantage of it and she moved with her knees closer to him. Her hands on his shoulders as she stared down at his heartbreakingly gorgeous face. And then, suddenly, she spoke oh so seriously, Alexander Chin, do you take Abigail Chin to be your lawful wedded wife, to have and to hold, for better or for worse? she asked, and Alex almost choked. Ah, oh, I so want to hear that from the priest's lips as he weds us. Abby cupped her hands together and blinked at the already gaping Alex. However, she couldn't see his reaction because the man abruptly reached out, held her waist and pulled him close to him. The next second, they were lying on the fluffy rug, with Alex spooning her. Abby was taken aback. This intimate position made her heart beat like a drum as she felt his warm body press against her. Um. Alex, isn't it my turn to read to you now? Where is your book? she asked. She tried to move so she could see his face, but the man didn't let her. That, we'll do it tomorrow night when you're not in this outfit of yours, he answered and Nobby frowned. Ha! Huh? What's wrong with my outfit? You really don't like it. It's not that. It's just that this fluffy outfit of yours tonight doesn't match the theme of the book you're going to read. Tomorrow, I'll be the one to choose what you'll wear. Abby couldn't see his face so she couldn't tell what kind of expression he was showing but he didn't seem to be smirking behind her so even though she was still confused on why her outfit even mattered when all she would be doing was reading a book, she agreed anyway. Oh okay. Good girl, he whispered. His arm around her waist pulled her even closer to him. Is this the kind of cuddling you're talking about? Or should we do more than this? Alex stared at her side profile as he asked, but as expected, the girl shook her head and told him this was enough. Silence then enveloped the large living room with both of them staring at the burning flames, as if each their thoughts were far away in outer space. It was midnight when Alex opened his eyes again. He felt someone's presence but because he was still spooning the little white fluffy lamb, he couldn't turn around to see who it was. He slowly and carefully tried to lift his hand but to his surprise, the little lamb was actually holding on to it tightly. Letting out a sigh, Alex silently and slowly rose without pulling his arm away from her. In the end, he sat there in an awkward position as he looked at the three guys standing there, looking at him. Two of the men were looking at him with wide surprised eyes, while one of them was expressionless. Ale, one of them called out but he immediately clamped his mouth because of the sudden chilling gaze Alex threw at him as soon as he spoke. Moments ago, Kai, Xavier, and Ezekiel arrived at Alex's house at exactly midnight. They were expecting to see Alex sitting by the fireplace, as usual, since his little lamb would already be asleep by then. But to their shocked surprise, Alex was indeed right there by the fireplace, but he was spooning a little white, fluffy, pin-like matter as he lay on the soft rug which had even been romantically sprinkled with rose petals. What the F asterisk CK? Bloody hell! were the first words that ran through Xavier's head and he even almost blurted it out because he was so surprised. Xavier and Kai were staring in disbelief. They never thought that one day, they would see the great Alexander Chin in this state. What the hell happened while they were not around? Did some evil creature possess him? But who would dare possess a demon like him? 
They were rooted to the floor with nothing but disbelief in their eyes. When they saw him move, their shock elevated because Alex was acting strange again. He was moving so damn slow and it seemed like he was having trouble trying to pull his hand away from that white fluffy pin, or, wait, was that a lamb? Xavier couldn't take it anymore and called out Alex's name, however, what he got was a cold, sharp glare. What the hell did he do? It was then that the fluffy white thing suddenly moved. When it turned and hugged Alex's hand, they finally saw it was a human and it was none other than his little lamb. Xavier wanted to slap his forehead. What the hell? Did Alex make her wear a little lamb's costume? Seeing that they just interrupted their intimate moment, the three guys slowly dispersed, with Ezekiel being the first to leave and go to his room. The next day, Abby woke up in her room. Her eyes slowly fluttered open as the events from last night drifted into her consciousness and a big smile formed on her face. She was so happy and the first thing she did was to pick her notebook and cross out the two wishes that were fulfilled last night. But then, in the next moment, she freaked out. Wait, what time was it now? Alex was supposed to fulfill her other wishes today. As Abby frantically crawled out of the bed, she was startled when she saw Alex leaning against the door frame. He was like a perfect tall and lean statue standing there with folded arms. Good morning, Alex, she greeted him and as always, he didn't greet her back. He instead walked towards her and then he single-handedly lifted her up, princess-style, onesie and all. Alex, see can I go watch my face first, she asked him and the man paused. He looked at her face and raised a brow. Don't bother. That hardened drool on your face looks cute, he said and then he started walking again as Abby gaped at him in disbelief. She quickly rubbed her face but there was no trace of drool on her face at all. Alex, you, liar. I don't have any drool on my face, she argued but the man just smirked at her. Emin, I lied, little fruit. He smirked at her. Abby couldn't help but rub her face again. Is it gone? she asked, embarrassed, and the man chuckled. There was actually no drool on her face but because she felt embarrassed, she believed the lie and this man wasn't going to let a good opportunity go to waste. So, you believe me even though you said I'm a liar. What a silly, little fruit, he told her but what he did next was lift her up even higher so he could whisper in her ear. Want me to help you with it? Abby could only nod and she raised her face up to him so that he would be able to reach it. But when she thought about it, his hands were full so how. Before she finished the thought, the man suddenly licked the corner of her lips down to her chin. Abby jolted and her face burned red. Done, he simply said and Abby scolded at him. What are you doing? Helping you. What kind of help is that? The kind of help that good boyfriends give to their girlfriends. He sexily smiled and Abby could only bury her face on her palm. You should be thanking me, little lamb. Abby was about to retort but the man finally put her down. Abby removed her hand from her face and was surprised to see that they were already standing on the mansion's grandest and highest veranda. Abby had never been on this particular veranda before because the large doors were always closed. However, she almost freaked out because the man actually made her sit on top of the railing, with her feet dangling on air. Abby would have been frantically clinging on to him but she immediately felt his strong arms wrap around her waist, securing her. Just with that, her fear immediately subsided because to her, his arms were the most secure rope that could ever hold her. Alex, what are we doing he? Abby couldn't continue her questions because at that very moment, sunlight started to peek over the horizon, painting the gray sky with breathtaking colors. Abby finally realized that her first request last night was for both of them to watch the sunrise and the sunset. So this was it. 
This was again more than what she expected. Because Alex's mansion was on top of a small hill and this grand veranda was facing east, they had indeed the perfect view of the sunrise. She never thought that the sunrise would be so breathtakingly spectacular from there. Wow, was the first word that left Obby's mouth as she watched the horizon. It's so beautiful, Ale, she mumbled as her grip on him tightened a little. I think this is the most beautiful sunrise I have ever seen with my own two eyes. Aubie was certain that this sunrise was the most beautiful one she had ever seen, simply because she was watching it with him. After their meal that morning, Aubie was surprised to hear a helicopter land on the mansion's backyard. She didn't know why but the first thing she thought was that there was an emergency and someone came to fetch Alex. Her heart, which was filled with excitement, somehow started to feel a little sad and disappointed, disappointed that their plan for the day might not happen again. Before she knew it, she was silently praying and hoping that Alex would not leave again. When she saw that Alex was heading to the back door, Aubie couldn't stop herself from chasing him. She suddenly clung on his arm as he opened the back door, causing Alex to halt and look at her. Um. Alex. I, way you're not leaving again, right? She asked, looking both worried and downhearted. Gone was the beaming light that shone on her face since sunrise. Seeing his face, Alex immediately realized what she was thinking but he couldn't blame her since he already left her twice in just the few days that they were together. The man's lips curved up and then, he held her hand. Come, he said and he led her out. Once Abby saw the helicopter, she was suddenly thrilled. She had always thought that helicopters, especially the military choppers, were incredibly cool. Stay here, Alex told her before he let go of her hand and headed to the helicopter. Abby watched him as he ducked slightly towards it. He talked to the man who was dressed in an aviation uniform so she correctly guessed that he was the pilot. She saw the pilot climb down while he conversed with Alex. Seeing that no one else other than the pilot was inside the helicopter, Abby gasped at her next thought. Could it be that they were going to ride in that? Whoa! Abby's hands flew to her mouth. Don't worry, Miss Abigail, that ride is very safe, I assure you, someone spoke and Abby finally realized that Xavier was standing right beside her. He was smiling and his pleasant face almost seemed to be shining. You mean, Alex and I will really ride in that? She asked, pointing at the idling helicopter. Oh. Alex didn't tell you yet. Xavier's eyes widened. Oh no, what have I done? Thinking that he had spoiled Alex's surprise, Xavier scolded himself. Oh gosh. I need to run away now or Alex might kill me. Haha, <laughs> um, I think Alex is calling you to go over there, he suddenly said, forcing a laugh and Obby's head snapped towards Alex. Xavier actually just said that to divert her attention from him so he could escape. But little did he know that the little lamb immediately believed what he said and she started running towards Alex, smiling widely. By the time Alex and the pilot's talk was over, he turned and saw Abby already approaching. Her downhearted look just a while ago was gone. She was beaming at him like a super excited child and her long hair danced behind her as she ran. The moment she reached him, she held his hands as she gazed up at him. Alex, we're going to ride in this, right? Her eyes were sparkling so brightly that before Alex knew it, he nodded at her. He actually missed the opportunity to tease her first before spilling the surprise. As soon as Alex confirmed it, Abby suddenly hugged him in excitement before she let go of him and turned her attention towards the helicopter. Wow! So cool! She gushed as she jumped up and down like an excited little kid about to go on their first ever ride at an amusement park. When she finally stopped jumping, she leaned in through the door and took a peek inside it. Alex's lips curved up, seeing her excited reaction. 
Her reaction made him think that this might actually be his little fruity lamb's first helicopter ride. Okay, get in, Abigail, he said and the girl immediately climbed onto the passenger seat. Alex then followed and Abby was surprised when he sat on the pilot's seat. You're the pilot? Her big eyes turned round. What, does that scare you? He smirked as he started pushing buttons and flicking switches on the dash in front of him. His movements were very precise and decisive, indicating that he had done this many times before. No, I'm not scared. I'm just surprised. I didn't know you're a pilot, too. Alex just smiled again. He already knew that this little lamb was a daredevil so he thought that this wouldn't scare her and he was absolutely right. In fact, compared to the speed he was going during that car ride with her in the passenger seat, this was going to be like a walk in the park. As soon as they soared in the sky, not a tinge of fear appeared on her face. She was purely thrilled and awed. They landed on a picturesque, secluded, white beach. Abby was all smiles as she looked at Alex. That was awesome, Alex, she told him. Can I pilot it when we go back? She cupped her hands as she blinked with puppy eyes. Sure. For some reason, Alex had been expecting this little lamb of his to ask to fly the helicopter. You will teach me. Nope. Why would I waste time teaching you how to fly when I have a lot of other things I want to teach you? Ha! Huh. Abigail. You have a lot of things you want to teach me. Like what? Abby frowned in curiosity and excitement, thinking of all the different possibilities. But Alex just smiled at her mischievously before he leaned in on her and whispered in his ear. You will find out tonight, little fruit. I will teach you something more interesting. Don't worry, I'll make sure that you will reach the sky, much higher than the height that this helicopter flew up to. Abby blinked, a little confused. How would she fly higher than the helicopter? Was he going to teach her how to fly a jet plane? She was about to ask again when the sound of an animal pulled her attention. When she turned towards the direction that the sound came from, she saw a beautiful horse, lightly tied next to a coconut tree. Abby gasped. She was stupefied. She had never seen a horse as beautiful as this one in real life. The horse was pure midnight black, which somehow reminded Abby of Alex. It had an athletic frame, deep sloping shoulders, powerful muscling over the hips and thighs and long clean legs with pronounced tendons. It seemed to be well-bred as it waited there patiently, looking majestic and proud, with its silky mane dancing softly in the ocean breeze. I is that our horse? Her eyes were round as she asked him. When the man nodded, Abby was about to rush towards it but Alex quickly caught her arm, stopping her. Don't rush towards it like that, you little fruit, he scolded her. You need to be careful. Don't make sudden movements because that might put you in a dangerous situation since he's not familiar with you yet. But Abby was unfazed. It's okay, Alex. He will like me. She smiled firmly at him but the man still refused to let her go. Don't be stubborn or I won't let you ride it he threatened and Abby could only purse her lips. Alex then led her towards it and they approached the horse together, with Alex standing in front of Abby in a protective stance. Alex reached out and grabbed the reins with his left hand while his right hand rubbed the horse's neck to calm it down, not that it wasn't already calm. He then looked back at Abby and nodded at her, indicating that she could now come closer and say hello to the horse. Abby's eyes were shining as she reached out her hand to touch it. The horse's hair was so smooth and silky that Abby couldn't help but want to run her fingers through it. Before she knew it, she was already caressing the horse's face, without any hint of fear at all. It seemed that the animal really did like her. Abigail, did you come here for a horseback ride or what? 
Abby's attention was finally pulled away from the handsome horse back to her handsome companion. She lifted her face and she finally realized that Alex was already sitting on the saddle, riding the horse and holding the reins, looking like a majestic king. There were lines on his forehead as he glared at her. He seemed displeased, as if he couldn't accept that a horse actually pulled his little fruit's attention away from him completely. But Abby didn't notice his expression because she was mesmerized by the sight of him. Alex, sitting on top of a handsome horse, was definitely a sight to behold. His long black coat and dark hair plus the perfect and cool black stallion was just so picturesque she thought she was looking at a magazine cover. Seeing her gaping at him, the lines on Alex's forehead slowly disappeared. He smirked and even ran his fingers through his hair, as if he was posing for some photo shoot. His movements and gaze made Abby's heart beat in a frantic tempo. This man was unknowingly playing with her heart. Gladly, Abby was able to snap out of her daze. She reached out and tried to climb up on her own but her legs were too short. The stallion was so tall that she couldn't get her foot in the stirrups to get leverage. Alex, she gazed up, her lips curving down and the man, who just sat there enjoying his little lamb struggles, finally bent down and then, in one swoop, Abby was easily placed in front of him, sitting on her side on the saddle. Um. Alex, I want to sit like you. No. Your leg, Abigail, he reminded her and Abby could only purse her lips again. Let me hold the reins, then, she requested and this time, Alex didn't say no. Thank you. She happily grabbed it but Alex placed his hands on top of hers, as if he was about to teach her how to lead a horse. Alex loosened the reins and then, the horse started to walk Abby was all smiles as they started on their journey. Along the way, she tried to direct the horse using the reins so the horse would go towards the direction she wanted and with only a little help from Alex, she managed to do it. She was so ecstatic. This is so nice, Alex, she said as she chuckled happily in both thrill and excitement. The girl was enjoying every moment occasionally turning to look at Alex as she spoke to him. Alex, on the other hand, didn't try to interrupt her joyful moment. Well, he did have the urge to do so a while ago, but the little fruit was too happy that his teasing didn't really work on her. She even smiled happily at him instead and started talking about the horse. As the horse slowly walked near the waves that were kissing the shore, Alex just remained silent listening to her. The picture of the couple riding the horse was such a romantic view. This was another experience that Abby would never ever forget. Happiness just kept flowing in her veins every time she was with him and she couldn't stop smiling. She knew that she would never have been this happy without him. She wished that this peaceful and joyful moment with him would never end, even though she knew it would, soon. Alex, thank you, Abby uttered. She knew that these words would never be enough to thank him or to describe the feeling of gratitude that she felt in her heart for everything that he had done for her. But even though she knew it, she still wanted to say it to show him that she didn't take these things for granted and that she loved every moment of it. Abby turned to look at Alex when the man didn't make a sound at all. She was surprised to see that Alex seemed to be spacing out, lost in his own thoughts as he stared at the small waves crashing on the shore. This was the first time she saw him like this. Alex, spacing out, was an absolutely unexpected sight. She never even thought that Alex could actually space out like a normal man. For some reason, his face seemed peaceful, the most serene expression he had ever shown her. The sight of him like this made Abby gape at him. The serenity he was exuding was just indescribable. At that moment, he was like a breathtaking painting. But Abby couldn't make herself just sit there and admire his immaculate features. It was because for some strange, unknown reason, her heart was clenching in pain from watching him. Was it because he looked so distant and lonely? 
Why did he look like he was all alone in this world? Abby thought her observation might be completely wrong and that she was just imagining what she was seeing but her heart was telling her something else. Subconsciously, Abby moved and she lightly kissed his lips. Once she pulled away, Alex was looking at her with slightly widened eyes, but in the next second, his expression completely shifted and his lips curved up. The serenity in his eyes had disappeared and was nowhere to be seen. I can't believe my little fruit has learned how to steal kisses now, he said in his normal voice, but the expression in his eyes was teasing. Aubi remained quiet as she stared at him. You were, spacing out. What's wrong? she asked, her voice hesitant. Alex stared back at her, but then he tilted his head. I am thinking about the things I am going to do with you tonight, Abigail, he replied, sexily. He was acting absolutely normally that Abby couldn't see anything unusual at all. What? You're already bored. Well then, I think it's time for us to go, he added as he looked at his watch. He then held the reins and pulled the horse to go back. As they rode back towards the helicopter, Abby was now the one who fell silent. She just couldn't forget it, that lonesome look on Alex's face. Alex jumped off with a small thud on the ground before he stretched out his arms and helped his little fruit on the ground. She saw that someone was making their way over to them and when the man reached out to take the rein to pull the horse away, Abby suddenly held on to the horse's neck, as if she didn't want to be parted from it. When she realized what she just did, she cleared her throat, a little embarrassed. This horse was not hers. Um. Alex, where are they taking him? She then asked, but Alex, who watched her reaction with some amusement, decided to tease her again. I don't know. They might be going to sell him or bring him to the slaughterhouse. No. Abby suddenly yelled and she grabbed the reins from that man who just came. She pulled the horse towards the helicopter as if she was planning to squeeze him inside the small area and bring him home. If you are selling him, I will buy him off you, she exclaimed as she gripped the horse's rein hard as if she wasn't planning on letting him go. Abigail, that's an Arabian thoroughbred. I think it sells for about $100,000. Alex said and as expected, the little fruit froze. The next second, Abby walked towards Alex and looked up at him with sad, puppy dog eyes. Alex, can you find someone you know to buy him? Someone who is nice, please, she pleaded and Alex raised a brow. What, why do I need to find someone else? Why aren't you asking me to buy him, he asked leaning down. Would you? Abby almost jumped. Well, why don't you convince me? He leaned back on the helicopter, crossing his arm as he looks at her. Why should I buy it? Um. Alex. Can't you see how amazing this beautiful creature is? I have many horses in Country V, Abigail. But this one is extraordinary. He's the most gorgeous horse I have ever seen. And, and, the nicest too. He's so sweet and well-behaved. That's because he's old, Abigail. Abby pressed her lips tight. How should she convince him? Look at his shiny coat and perfect disposition. Even his tail is super gorgeous. As Abby continued, Alex was busy enjoying the sight of her doing her best to think of a good enough reason. He was so enjoying it that he kept on acting hard to get until the girl suddenly stepped closer to him, so close that their bodies were almost touching. Alex, please buy him, she cupped her hands and pleaded but the man didn't budge. You really don't want to, she looked like a drenched little puppy. Alex had had enough of teasing her and was about to give in when the little lamb suddenly looked like a light bulb just lit up above her head. Ah, oh, I know. I'll ask Ezekiel Cheen to buy it, she suddenly exclaimed, causing Alex's face to immediately harden. 
I saw his interview before and he mentioned he liked horses and he said he would buy any horse that catches his attention. The smirk on Alex's lips was long gone the moment she mentioned Zeke's name. Zeke will never buy an old horse, Abigail, he strongly discouraged her. I think he will. He will definitely like this horse. I told you, he won't buy it. He will, Alex, if he saw how gorgeous the horse is. He will definitely buy it. I'm sure of it. How can you be so sure that he will like it? Alex's voice became a little louder. Because I saw some of his horses in the magazines. He has a range of them and he seems to like gorgeous horses regardless of their age, Abby argued and Alex felt his veins popping. Just because of that. Well, Mr. Cheen is a tycoon. One hundred thousand dollars is nothing to him. I saw that he even spends millions over one thing he wants. And then, the ever-so-calm Alexander finally lost it. He looked at the man silently watching them and he spoke loudly, making Abby stop talking. I'll buy that horse for two hundred thousand dollars. Here's my business card. I'll send someone over to pay and get the horse, he said, and the man and Abby looked at him in disbelief. What did he just say? Two hundred thousand dollars. Before Abby could speak, Alex took the rein from Abby's hands and gave it back to the man before he walked around and climbed into the cockpit. Abby was speechless. What just happened? She looked at the man and he happily nodded at her before he pulled the horse away. Hop in now, little fruit. Or I'll leave you here, he told her, and Abby finally snapped out of her daze. She frantically climbed in as Alex started the helicopter. Abby was still staring at him, trying to figure out what just happened. Alex glanced at her and he moved and put on her harness. And then, in no time at all, they were soaring in the sky. Alex, why did you buy it for double the amount? Because I felt like it. Abby blinked. Could it be that he didn't like it when she said that Ezekiel Cheen wouldn't mind spending one hundred thousand to buy it? Or, maybe he just gave in to her. Abby continued thinking about why Alex did that and more questions arose. Why did he need to pay it twice the amount? Now that she thought about it, wasn't that the first time they actually exchanged words like that as if they were arguing? Whoa! In the end, Abby gave up thinking about it and she just felt glad that someone else didn't buy it. She would feel devastated if they hurt the horse that she and Alex rode together for the first time. Thank you, Alex. She smiled brightly at him and the man just threw her a quick glance. I'm gonna punish you tonight, Abigail, he mumbled to himself. Hmm. Did you say something? she asked but Alex just sexily bit his lip hard. Once the couple arrived at their next destination, Abby was once again utterly surprised. What surprised Abby wasn't the fact that the helicopter landed in the middle of a large amusement park, she was shocked that the place looked deserted. She could still see few staff wearing their uniform but it looked like no guests were inside, except the two of them. The park was obviously closed to the public. Abby already deduced that this was Alex's doing. She didn't expect this at all. She didn't even want to think just how much money this man might have spent by now just to fulfill her requests. And this was just her third request for today. As she thought about it, Abby couldn't help but feel overwhelmed. He always exceeded her highest expectations with everything that Abby sometimes wondered if she was asking for too much. Little fruit, are you just going to stand there? Alex asked, looking back at her. Come, he then added, pulling his hand from his pocket and stretched it out for her to hold. Abby stared at his elegantly long hand before she took it. The two then walked hand in hand in the middle of an empty street towards a large castle. But before they reached the large castle, which was where she thought they were going, Alex, instead, 
led her towards another path. We're here, he said as they stood before a small eerie-looking castle. The words, haunted house, were written with what looked like blood, on a piece of wood hanging above the entrance. I really don't know why you want to go to a haunted house. If you want to get scared, you should just ask me and I'll scare you myself, he smirked evilly at her, even unleashing his chilling aura as he caressed her cheek with the back of his fingers. Somehow, Abby got what he meant. Even the ghosts might be scared of this man if he raged. But not her. I don't think that would work. I'll just run towards you for shelter even if you're the one trying to scare me, she replied as if she was stating a fact and Alex was speechless. How could he forget that this little lamb had never run away from him, and even approached him instead, every single time when she was supposed to be scared? Letting out a quiet sigh, Alex then pulled her hand and they entered the house. As they entered the dark alley, Abby began to cling on to him. It was quiet inside. Alex, this seems strange. I think no one is here. Maybe because the park is closed. Abby said as she looked around while Alex simply shrugged. However, in the next moment, something fell like raindrops on the floor right in front of them. When Abby looked up, a bloody body fell on the floor, covering the drops of blood that fell down. Abby jolted in fear and she jumped behind Alex, wrapping her arms around his waist. Nice. This stuff looked pretty realistic, Alex just raised a brow. After that appetizer, the two ventured further inside. It didn't seem like the little lamb was a scaredy cat. She often jolted but she never screamed in fear like he was expecting. But once they were about to reach the exit, something unexpected happened. Abby let go of Alex because she thought that the adventure was over. She ran ahead of him, excited to see the outside world when suddenly, the alley where she ran to, that she thought was the exit, suddenly closed behind her, separating her from Alex. Abby's eyes widened when she couldn't see Alex anymore. Alex, she called out and then, a cold hand grabbed her from behind. Abby slowly turned and what she saw made her scream. Let go, as she yelled but as she struggled, Cold hands also grabbed her feet and her hands. Abby was terrified. She tried to muster her strength to escape but this was too much. It felt so real and Abby's fear was starting to get the better of her. Stop. Let go. Don't pull me. Stop pulling, she screamed as the creepy hands started to pull her backwards. Alex. At that moment, a loud thud made everything halt. The door that separated her from Alex fell on the floor. It was completely broken. The hands that were pulling Abby also halted as if they got frozen. When Abby saw Alex, she immediately tried to pull herself away from the hands but then, the hands started pulling her again. Ah! Oh. Alex! Help me! Abby could only plead. The next second, Alex was right before her, holding her waist as he pulled her to him. His eyes blazed with coldness so intense that the owner of the hands grabbing at Abby felt like they were frostbitten. Punks! Let go of her if you don't want to die, he threatened them, and just like that, the ghosts crawled away. The ghost staff couldn't believe that they had encountered a real demon inside the haunted house. What the hell? They thought they would receive high praise for their job well done making the girl finally scream but they actually received a chilling threat instead. That was the first time a customer as scary as him ever visited this haunted house since it was created. They looked at the door he broke and they all gaped at each other in both wonder and fear. Who the hell was that man? Did they hurt you? Alex asked once Abby calmed down. When Abigail shook her head, the man bent and looked at her with narrowed eyes. So, you were just screaming like that because you were scared. When the girl nodded again, 
Alex slowly shook his head. I can't believe that you were actually scared. Are you the same person who survived that dungeon alone? T. There were no ghosts in there, she reasoned out as they both finally stepped out through the exit. You know that those ghosts here are fake. In that dungeon, there were lots of bones and skulls where you crawled. In fact, the stones you said you threw were probably human bones, Abigail, and yet, you're scared for these fake. Alex trailed off because Obby's eyes began to dilate and her hands even slightly trembled. Who human bones? She mumbled as she looked at her hand. She was suddenly terrified about the idea that these hands of hers had touched dead people's skulls and bones. Seeing her expression, Alex cursed himself for reminding her of that experience. He himself entered the dungeon so he knew what it was like inside. That was absolutely the most awful place she had ever seen and he should have thought about saying anything about it. Someone like her wouldn't ever want to remember that again. TSK I'm just kidding, he ruffled her hair and Obi looked up. When she saw that the man was grinning mischievously, she let out a sigh of relief. Who wouldn't be scared of touching or grabbing human body parts that belonged to the dead? Just the thought of it was terrifying. Why you're so mean, she told him as her fear slowly subsided. She was sure that if what Alex said was true, that might haunt her to sleep so she was truly glad it was a joke. Now then, let's move on, he looked around and he was about to move when Obi stopped him. Alex, let's take a selfie. She said and before Alex could even say anything, she jumped onto him, quickly wrapped her arm around his neck and pulled him down. And then, snap. Obi was smiling but because of her sudden movement, Alex ended up looking at her instead, with the haunted house as their background. Their first picture together was such a cute shot. The reason why Alex chose this particular theme park was because in here, he could fulfill Obi's requests in one day without traveling to different places. The park even had a huge jungle-like zoo inside so it was the perfect choice. Obi didn't waste a moment to enjoy roaming around, being fascinated by the countless numbers of animals that she was seeing while Alex just looked like a husband accompanying his wife to the shopping mall. He was casually following her, almost like a gorgeous robot, just tailing her, watching her every expression, and looking like he wasn't pleased that these animals could actually fascinate his little fruit to no end and even make her so happy. Alex, come. Can you help me feed the giraffe? I can't reach it. Obi began pulling him as she pointed at the towering giraffe through the fence. The fence was high in that area because they didn't allow animal feeding in this park. It just so happened that a staff member was on its way to feed the giraffe and Obi happened to see her. The cheerful, hopeful girl spoke with the staff member and because the staff member wasn't allowed let her go inside the fence to feed the giraffe, for her safety, she gave Obi lettuce to feed them across the fence. The nice lady also offered to go and get her a stick for her to use to feed them. When the staff member was gone, it was then that Obi saw her boyfriend, leisurely leaning on a pillar with his hands in his pockets, surrounded by a calm noble aura. He didn't seem to be fed up, just bored, so Obi determinately pulled him to help her. Abigail, are you going to ask me to take this one home, too? He asked as he lazily looked up and stared at the giraffe. No, no, no. Obi frantically waved her hands. I can't make you spend any more than what you've already spent for me, she added and Alex's gaze hardened. It appeared that he didn't like what she said. Listen, little fruit, he uttered as he pinched her chin lightly. I'll spend what I want. You don't have a say on that. So don't ever mind the measly amount of money. Got it? Measly amount. Obi echoed in her mind. But before she could ponder on it, his strong arms suddenly held her waist and lifted her up. Obi stretched her hand out and began feeding the animal. 
However, Alex realized that the position was uncomfortable for her, so he put her down before the animal could even eat the lettuce in her hand. Aubie was about to ask what was wrong when Alex knelt like an esteemed knight in front of her. Sit on my shoulders. Be careful of your leg, he ordered but Aubie didn't move. She was surprised. She couldn't believe that Alex would let her ride on his shoulders. I'll give you three seconds. One, two. Before she knew it, she immediately obeyed and was already sitting on the man's shoulders. Your hand, he said and once he held her left hand, and secured her, he stood up. Aubie gushed in surprise. She suddenly felt like she was on top of the world. Alex was very tall and he lifted her like she was made of paper. She didn't even need to stretch her arms anymore because she could now touch the giraffe's head. Thrilled and excited with this unexpected twist, Aubie happily fed the giraffe. She was chuckling and enjoying the moment more than ever. She couldn't put into words how nice she was feeling, being carried by Alex this way. She touched the giraffe and chuckled at how cute it was. Once she was done, Alex knelt but Abby didn't climb down. She instead held on to Alex's head, smiling widely. Alex, can you carry me like this for a little longer, she requested playfully. She wanted the experience to last longer but she was afraid she was asking him too much so she said it in a way that it was fine for him to decline. But then, surprisingly, the man just stood up, carrying her like that as he walked towards their next destination without any complaint. Aubie was overjoyed. She felt like she was the happiest girl alive at that moment. When they were finally out of the jungle, Aubie asked him to put her down, thinking that she can't possibly make him carry her all the way. Are you sure? I'm not going to carry you again once I put you down. But, are your shoulders okay? I'm pretty heavy so it might be getting strained. Heavy. He chuckled wickedly. I feel like I'm carrying a small basket of fruit. Seriously Abigail, where did you put the food you have eaten? You're too light. I. I don't think so. I think you're just too strong, she argued but in the next second, she smiled. Fine, carry me until we get over there. Let's go Alex, she yelled happily, even stretching her hand forward like she was Superman. Finally, it was time for Abby to climb down. She had rested her legs enough, thanks to Alex offering himself to be her ride. That was great. Abby grinned at him. Her eyes twinkling like a clear blue lake reflecting the sun. I would really, really love it if you let me ride you again next time, she added happily. But the man, who didn't even sweat from carrying her, just smirked naughtily. He leaned in on her and whispered in her ear. Don't worry little fruit, once you ripen enough, I will let you ride me any time you want. Really? She was surprised. But then, seeing that wickedly sexy smirk and that mischievous look in his eyes, Abby felt like he was tricking her again. Wait and see, little fruit. He leaned back and then he pulled her inside the arcade house.